but you also can't go to a Halloween party without a Halloween costume. But also, like, I don't want. I got an idea for you. Harry Potter. No. Oh. Similar. Max, you still got those overalls? Yeah, this is bullshit. I knew. I I, 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 I could read it in your fucking face. You you were like, I have an idea. I I could just see in the side of your eyes. That's a twinkle. A great idea. That's a great great idea. idea. That is a great idea. Max, we're going to need those overalls, buddy. On today's part of my take, we have our good friend Kyle Long in studio, the first ever guest in the new Pardon My Take studio. We have week eight picks and preview. We talk Thursday night football, fantasy fuck boys. Great show. Football Friday. Feels good. It is all brought to you by our friends at Chevy. There's a new family with unstoppable grit, and they're the official partners of the Pardon My Take family. And that is the Chevy Silverado ZR2 family. The first ever Silverado heavy duty ZR2 joins the franchise to make Chevy ZR2 the only truck brand with a f- full lineup of trucks ready for wherever your off road adventures take you with exclusive Multimatic DSSV dampers, rugged mud terrain tires, and up to 14 available camera views. The Chevy Silverado ZR2 and Silverado HD ZR2, a family. With commanding and unstoppable grit, head to Chevy.com. Check out Chevy Silverado and the family of Chevy ZR2s, the official trucks. Pardon my take. Thank you to Chevy. Chevy.com. Go right now. We are a Chevy podcast. If you're thinking about being a truck person, Chevy's the place to be. Go head head over right now. Chevy.com and get into a truck, the official trucks. Pardon my take. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take. Today is Friday, October 27th, and the Bills are back, sort of. Yeah, the first half Bills were back. Sort of. So it's tough to say because the first half Bills were definitely back, and their defense played really well to the point where their offense didn't need to, like, take the top off in the second half. Yeah. They remained tarps tarps off. Tarps on, unlike Fitzy. Triggering. Unlike Fitzy there. Or us. Or us. Uh, But it seemed like they were back. This... This win felt a lot better than their last couple games. You yeah. Can, you can say that if you're a Bills fan. Probably some things that you'd like to do different in the second half on offense, but you didn't need to. And and the fact is the Bucks only got close because that last drive, they got extended like three times on fourth down. It was, yeah, the Bucks. The Bucks. if you look at that box score, you're like, ooh, the Bucks were in this game. They were not. They covered the spread, which was a tragedy. Also, shout out the Bills punter. Yeah. What a night from him. Beast. I mean, that last one, he almost put on the one yard line. He should have put it on the one. Yeah. So, uh, not the best game. Yeah, it was football. It was football. It was football. And it was nice to see Josh running around out there. It yeah, was well, good to see him. So, he, he hurt his shoulder. Hurt his right shoulder. And then they reported the that he was giving low fives. Yeah. Not high fives. Yeah. Which is a very medical, that's a medical term. It is. Yeah. It was um, supinated, not pronated at the end of it, mm. which my medical degree tells me. He just fucked up his shoulder a little bit. He's got a mini buy now. Yeah, mini buy. Mini buy. Um, yeah. The, the Bills, they look like they maybe fixed a little bit. Of what was ailing them, you it know did what, help that Vita Vea was out. You know what the they Bucks. did? They stopped the bleeding. They stopped the bleeding. Yeah, they got a win. I, maybe this is what the Bills are. Maybe the Bills are just going to end up being like a eleven win team, and they'll look. Hank, were you were you making a noise at that? I heard it. Uh, maybe the Bills are going to be an eleven win team, and they'll have at least two more times this season where they look like the worst team in football. Yeah, I think I think the Bills right now are um, they're above average, they're an above average team, but I don't think that they're the world beaters. How quickly do you recover from a torn ACL if you're Tre'Davious White? Mm. He needs to get on that Aaron Rodgers shit. Is Matt Milano no chance of coming back? I don't think he broke his leg, so maybe I don't know. It's better yeah, than a you sprain. Know you know what? Better I, than a sprain. That's right. A sprained leg is the worst. The worst you thing have. you could get. I'm going to say Matt Milano will be back for the playoffs, and oh. I've done zero research into it. Okay. And yeah, the the uh, the Bills have the Bengals next, which will be a great game. That's Sunday Night Football next week. That'll be good. That'll be a great game. As for the Bucks, they stink. Yeah. Yeah. They're they have no real running game to speak of. Their defense minus Vita Vea also bad. Uh, just bad. Baker Mayfield looks 
better than most thought he would this year. That's the best thing I could. Also, I have no idea what Todd Bowles is doing as head coach. Well, zero idea. Todd Bowles. He's being Todd. He's like more Todd. He's playing a chess match against Todd Bowles. Yeah. As a coach, the the fake field goal or field goal or just run out the clock play they did at the end of the half was insane. You had the, you had the holder telling the uh, the kicker like, no, no, we're not going to run this play. So that tells me either the kicker went out there and was like, fuck it, I know we're supposed to just run the clock out, but I can make this. And the, the holder was telling him no, or it was a look to see if they were going to fake it. And the, the kicker really wanted to fake it. And the holder was like, no, we're not snapping this ball. I thought my Amazon stream was glitching because it was like a perfect loop of, of crowd noise and everyone was standing still. Yeah. It was like, what's going on here? It, it was a very weird into the first half. Um, just Todd Bowles continues to to amaze me as a head coach. He doesn't amaze me at all. He's just not good. No, that's how he, he amazes me. <laughs> Todd Bowles. He's boring and not good, which is the worst combination. But he does find creative ways to be bad. Whatever yeah. that was at the end of the half yeah, was a very right. creative way to be bad. And the craziest thing about this game is that the Bucks could have easily won on the last play. Which is crazy. Credit to Baker Mayfield. He threw... A perfect Hail Mary. That he might, really did. You know what? I think that is the number one incompletion of the season so far. Mm. That was a great Hail Mary that he threw. That was an insane Hail Mary. Godwin didn't turn around. Bucks fans are saying Mike Evans had illegal contact at the 10-yard line. Yeah. They're never going to call that. What um, Al Michaels didn't make any mistakes tonight? He did have a slight one when he was like, and it looks like the Bucks are going to punt, but he was actually retroactively correct because they came out in the field goal formation and then, like we described, took the delay game and punted. Mm -hmm. But he said... Looks like they're going to punt, and Kirk Herbstreit was like, I think that might be a field goal, Al. Yeah, I mean, Al probably really enjoys going to Buffalo because there's zero chance that somebody sneaks a vegetable on his plate. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Absolutely they don't. Not. They don't allow those in the city walls. Celery. Yes, yeah, so, celery. Get this off my a plate. A garnish. Jake, Jake, did you hear any uh, any Al Michaels mistakes tonight? I didn't hear any mistakes, no. He does seem bored with bad football, though. I was going to say, the energy definitely wasn't – Al, the Al Michaels I'm used to growing up. All right, I'm going to look up real quick. I'm going to look up Al Michaels on Twitter and just play the first video. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Pressure looked out, avoids a sack, takes off, turns a big loss into a nice game. Got away that time from London. Yeah, there's no energy. Well, that seems like a very, like, mad play. Uh, it was Baker Mayfield only almost getting sacked three times and then getting a twelve yard run. Okay, twelve yard run. That does you don't even in the yell fourth for a quarter yard run or no third quarter. But I mean, still, I would say um, we've had this debate on the stream. Is that a is that a nice little chunk that he got? I would say that's like okay, that's a that's a uh, an exciting play. Hail yeah. Mary to end the game. All right, let's listen to it. We're gonna give an honest assessment. <laughs> Uh, crazy uh, stuff, yikes. not this time. Crazy stuff. Uh -huh. I'm not going to speak not much this on this time. time. I don't think you can say crazy stuff in a more boring voice. Also, what does not this time mean? As in, it didn't it, happen this time. Right. Compared to other like, times it's happened. Yeah. Right. Not this time. Yeah. I, yeah. I love Al Michaels. He is part of many memories. But if I last week I tried to defend him, this week I think I'm going to say. Let's just maybe hope we can like shoot him up with some testosterone and have one last ride here. Some coke. Yeah. You know what? Just, I mean, like uh, Herb Street. Uh, Herb Street is a great friend to Lee Corso on game day, right? To old people to, to, everywhere. He, he loves Lee Corso. They seem to have a genuinely touching relationship. Correct. He needs to take that same energy to Al Michaels and bring cocaine into the booth to get Al going during games. Yeah. For America, Kirk. Okay. Well, so take that private jet on one of those Thursday flights you take down to Columbia. And then come back real quick to see Al drop a bag on his desk and let America have fun. It's just I, I love Al and I don't want to see him go out this way. It's he's, I think What? I mean he's a legend. And I'd be surprised if he got back on the playoff game. The NBC second playoff game. Mm -hmm. Remember he did the Oh Chirico? No. NBC had two wild card playoff games and they put Al Michaels with Tony Dungy for the Chargers Jags. Oh, we can't have that playoff American game. game. It no. was like the we greatest. We got to get comeback. Jack Collinsworth out there or Jason Garrett. Yeah, yeah. somebody with some energy. <laughs> it would be, it would be uh, bad for this nation 
if it was Al Michaels and Tony Dungy calling a playoff game. Well, it happened last year. Can it, he like 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 uh, Jonathan Henderson just get slapped in the face before the game and just be like, "Whoa, mm-hmm. let's go, old school Al." That'd be nice. It'd be an improvement. Do you think it's a situation where like no one just wants to say, "Hey," because he is a legend. He's it's, a legend. It's that you. No one wants to be the guy that has that conversation with okay, Al. And, and honestly, I think that if it's good football, Al Michaels can still get the job done. And yeah. they paid him so much money. Not yeah. this time. <laughs> You know what? It, I'm, I'm actually going to defend Al Michaels. I am too. As as a football fan, he is the goat. We owe it to Al to just suck it up and yeah. let Al continue. Think of all the joy that he's brought us throughout okay. the years. I'm gonna I'm gonna suck it up. I'm gonna acknowledge that maybe he doesn't have the right energy. That he turns exciting plays into downers sometimes. But as as a football fan, this is what I've trained for. I will absorb all of Al Michaels' negative energy, and I will not complain about it. Here, I one up you, PFT. Uh, Thursday night football. We always get excited for it because it is football. It's Thursday night. It's kind of the start of the weekend, kick off the weekend. Hank, don't say anything. Uh, it usually is a bad game. Maybe Al Michaels is the perfect guy for Thursday night football. Yeah. Because, like, you don't want to peak too early. No. You want to kind of ease your way into the weekend. Yeah. No, that's a good spin zone. Yeah. I like that. But it's perfect. I think, I think we should just all agree to, to just take this shit. Uh, I'm going to yeah. take it. Yeah, I'm going to take it. NFL fans, they're just turning their backs on him. He's no, they're not turning so their backs on him. So many great memories with him. Oh, Malcolm Butler interception. Now no, no. nah, we hate this guy. No, no, no. They're not turning their why, backs. Why would you use a Patriots? They're just. There. They're no, just, I'm saying because it's one of the more iconic plays and calls yeah. by him. It was yeah, an yeah. NBC game. No, that it, was a compliment. I don't think oh. anyone's turning their back Thank on you. him. I think Very it's cool. just simply they're pointing out the fact that it might be time. There are some people that are clowning him. I'm not gonna, what have you done for me le- lately, Lee? That's facts, Hank. I'm not going to clown out. It's like Al Michaels and Bill Belichick kind of at the same stage in their careers right now. Well, Bill Al Belichick Michaels signed a three-year deal. And Bill Belichick's uh, coming yeah. off a win. Yeah, I mean, Al Michaels signed a massive contract with Amazon. Unrelated to any of this, get excited because Bears play the Panthers in two weeks on Thursday Night Football. Can't wait. Al uh, might just snore. I love the TNF on Prime <laughs> jingle. Oh, okay. I don't like how you say TNF. <laughs> yeah. Jake, I noticed how, I noticed how you remember that that uh, that Patriots Seahawks game was an NBC game. Yeah, do you remember what all Super Bowls like the no networks chance. they were broadcast I think on? The mo- the mo- no the last chance. like ten to twelve okay, years. Rams, yeah. Rams Patriots, CBS, Broncos Panthers, Fox. Who was this on is, it? This, this Who's is, on it? Well, Who's on the call? It's been the same crew. Steelers Cardinals. I think that was NBC. This is disgusting. Who was on it? Jake has. I would guess Alan Chris, but. It, no, Maybe not. wrong. Madden? Yeah, I think it was Madden's last whole game. Yeah, but I know the 28-3 was Fox. Seahawks, Broncos. That was Fox. I think you just said that. Did I? Yeah. Well, no, I said Panthers, Broncos. Oh, Panthers, Broncos was CBS. Super Bowl 50. That was the year that they had the gold 50 at every 50-yard line. Duh. I, you're, you're, I you're think ESPN's amazes, in the mix man. in 2027. I think they enter the cycle. Okay. But yeah, I think I, I I didn't realize I could do that until now. Pretty sad. Wait, what yeah, was pretty, Seahawks Broncos? Seahawks Broncos was Fox. Okay, I don't know what to do with this information. <laughs> yeah. He just knows all. Of them. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what to do. Jake with is that. a massive fan of networks. Huge. We gotta yeah. we gotta get you a jacket like the big uh, network the one just with boots. all the NFL logos. With Jake just, loves boots. Yeah, yeah. you do. I'm Wait, a, I'm no, a, he I'm loves booths booth now. He loves booths. True. And and trucks. <laughs> it's my new office. <laughs> Power rank him, Jake. Booths. Trucks. How, well, how is your booth compared to like NBC's booth? It's great. Uh, don't have a cough button. The mm-hmm. only, the only mm-hmm. thing that I don't have. Oh, we got, we got improvements. Yeah, we, yeah got, we, we, get, can, we can always get. Better. I would say PFT. Nothing in the booth can happen without the truck. <laughs> but <laughs> the truck comes first. But would the truck ever but be there without the, the booth? Over there, yeah. What's that? Would the truck ever show up if there wasn't a booth? You could, you could technically broadcast the game with no broadcasters. What? Oh, that's true. What, Remember, just like, I'm pretty sure in WWE didn't Jerry the King Lawler yeah, yeah, have like a health scare yeah, yeah. and they just went silent the rest of the broadcast yeah, out of respect it. for him. They, they did that, I think, unintentionally at some NFL game in the last 10 years where there was like a quarter with no announcers. Yeah, where and like the sound of yeah. And yeah. the announcers got very scared because they realized how much ass football still kicks without their voices. Yeah, over. we don't need you. No, no, just we, we shouldn't go back to that. We shouldn't go back to <laughs> just that. Just the sound. No, 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 no. Get rid of their jobs. Uh, okay, let's get uh, into the week eight picks and preview. And then we have Kyle Long in studio and finish up with Firefest. 
Okay, let's get to picks and preview, and it's brought to you by our friends at Uber Eats. It's football season, and you can now get almost, almost anything you need for game day delivered with Uber Eats. What do we mean by almost? Well, you can't get a win in Game 7 for Max's teams delivered. That is literally in the ad. Damn. But you can get wings delivered. A strong defense, that's a no. But strong deodorant, that's a yes. Pet supplies for Blake and Stella, yes. A six-pack of abs. Hank, definitely yes. no. Ugh. But a six-pack of beer, Uber Eats can get you that. There you have it. Get almost, almost anything for game day delivered with Uber Eats. Official on-demand food delivery partner of the NFL. Order now. Alcohol in select markets and 21 plus to order. Product availability may vary by region. See app for details. Get almost, almost anything with Uber Eats. Okay, boys. Week eight. No bye weeks. So much football. It's very weird that there's no bye week this week, right? I kind of like it just because this is almost... It would be impossible for the witching hour not to be electric this week with uh eight no seven games I seven just, ga I just eight feel games. like every year that i've played fantasy football which by the way i gave up on my fantasy teams in record time this year Same. it's so liberating i think it was week five i looked at all three of my rosters and i was like no I'm just not gonna do it just not gonna do it anymore i already stink and now i don't care about it i get the notifications i ignore them that might me make me the asshole in the fantasy league but it's so nice to not have to worry about can it. Can I? Can I, I? I agree with you, and I actually had an idea the other day because I have two fantasy leagues with fr people I've been friends with for a very, very long time. There needs to be a service like, you know, like a divorce attorney, where I don't have to tell them I'm gonna stop playing fantasy, but someone, some third party, can a intervene and be like, "Listen, he's dead." So he's not playing fantasy anymore yeah. or like some, some excuse. So it's the awkward, like that's the only thing that's keeping me in there is like, I just, I don't, I, there, these are my friends and I understand friendship and all that stuff, but I do not care at all about fantasy so much so that one of my friends texted me during week seven. He's like, I'm kicking your ass right now. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? Mm -hmm. And then I looked at my team. I had forgotten to start like half the team. You know what it was for me? I'm in like a suicide eliminator pool. And I just forgot to do it one week. And when I forgot to do that, then I was like, okay, I'm just, I'm not going to open up the Yahoo app anymore. But that, now that you say it out loud, we can learn from ourselves. We can admit mistakes. We can grow. I think I'm going to have to at least try because it does, I feel, I do feel like a bad friend feel, right yeah, now. Yeah, no, I exactly. I'm not doing it. So I'd like to immediately retract that. I fucked up. I took, who, who'd I take? Uh, Mecco and Karam Butler, they're not bad. They're not bad. Ryan Gomes, Ryan Gomes was 265, 265 pounds, he was five pounds 260 in high pounds. school. They're not bad. Mecco Okafor is not bad. I can't I've offer everyone. Admitted my mistake. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to try to play it. But I'm not, I'm not going to have any fun bad. doing it. Who? Mecco Okafor and Karam No, Butler. they were very good. Yeah. Not I, a dime back. I'm going to survive I mean, a pull. That, that consumes <laughs> most of my, my, my brain. We got to get... We gotta get Jim Calhoun back on the show. We should. But I mean, the 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 when when the when the reporter said to him, like, we have a report here that uh, you make, you know, two million dollars, and the state is losing this, and he just goes, "I make a hell of a lot more than that." It's so great. Not a dime back. It's so great. But Not to, a dime to back. my original point, I feel like every year that I played fantasy football, I would always just ignore the bye weeks. And yes. just not think about that. And it was always week eight. I always had players that were on bye weeks week eight. No no but, buys. But no buys this week. No buys. So let's get into it. Uh, we will be in the new gambling cave uh, watching all the games. I think the idea is uh, on Sunday night, because the Bears play Sunday night, we're going to watch that in here while we do the podcast. So you get live reactions that way. But let's start with the best games. Noon slate, one o'clock slate. People get mad when I say noon. I think the best game is Jaguars-Steelers in the noon slate. Let's talk about Jaguars-Steelers. Jaguars about to go on their bye. Steelers off a big win. Mike Tomlin is a home dog. We keep hammering it. 18-5-3 mm -hmm. against the spread. Maybe even an Allen Robinson revenge game. I guess so. He had a revenge game last week. I guess so. All I know, the Jaguars are going for five straight right now, which is the Jags haven't had a lot of good winning streaks over the course of their franchise. This would be nice for them to get. They're spraying down footballs in Jacksonville. Oh, they're getting ready rainy. for the water. Yeah. So they're they're having a guy with a hose out on the practice field. Urban Meyer had some hose out there too, but this is different. They're spraying it down and then they're simulating the rain. Uh, the Steelers, however, you mentioned Mike Tomlin, easiest coach to bet on. As Feel, an underdog, it feels like a hammer Mike Tomlin game. Also, this is maybe the biggest thing going to this game. 
it's a terrible towel statement game Mm -hmm. because Trevor Lawrence opened his mouth and referred to the terrible towel as those little yellow towels. Yeah. Now he was saying it, he was like giving them respect and it got quoted. Pittsburgh took it personal. This is a personal game for the towel. Double renegade. It might be a double renegade game, but he called out the towels. The, the Jaguars kind of own the Steelers. Well, we remember Blake. 2017, yeah, right? Yeah, Blake. Yeah. Yeah, went in there and put up like 44. It was incredible. Um, So I I lean Steelers here because of the Tomlin home dog. I also have a stat. George Pickens, really good receiver, starting to kind of blossom into – he's one of our favorite receivers to watch. Deontay Johnson being back is huge for George Pickens, and I actually think – Maybe Matt Canada's offense won't be as bad when Deontay Johnson's on the field. This is a stat that I've I don't even know really what it means. It's it but it sounds really impressive. So they have a stat yards per route run. Mm-hmm. So essentially just how many how many routes you're running and how many yards you got. Uh pretty easy to understand. With Deontay Johnson on the field, George Pickens is averaging four point oh yards per route run, which is actually like it would be the second in the NFL only behind Tyree Kill. Without He's averaging 2.7. Hmm. So George Pickens, Deontay Johnson matters for George Pickens, and we saw it in the second half against the Rams. Yeah, that's interesting. I know that Tyreek Hill had that one stat where or Kadarius Toney had the craziest one where, like, every time they threw him the ball, uh, the Chiefs lost a point in yeah. week one. That yeah, was in week one, yeah. But, yeah, I would like to see those stats for our general lives, just, like, per step, like, per, per mile walked – how many uh how many desserts do I have? Yeah. Per, like what's the what's the ratio on that? Farts per per step walked. Yeah. Um also one point two. I agree with you. I th- I think that it matters not just like Deontay. Deontay's obviously like a very good guy to have complimenting George Pickens, but just in general having two good options to yeah. go to helps the other guy. And they, they do complement each other well. And I think the Steelers are finally realizing that Jalen Warren is really fucking good. I also was watching some Jalen Warren highlights and he uh, people are saying he might be one of the best uh, running backs in terms of blitz pickup and okay. blocking. So Jalen Warren, give Jalen Warren the ball more. Maybe make Najee Harris like um, a junior tight end. I want to know what his what his war is. His wins above Najee. His wand. Yeah. What's his wand? Because Najee, when he when he touches the ball, it's hard to believe that he is like NFL running back caliber speed. Yeah, he just looks like he's running through snow. And 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 for the Jaguars, like you said. Going for five straight, Trevor Lawrence looks awesome. Their defense looks better than than people thought it was going to be this year. Uh, Calvin Ridley, is he getting iced out? I don't know. You think he's getting iced out? That was weird that he got no targets on Thursday Night Football. Yeah. And he, like, he was open sometimes, and he just Trevor Lawrence wasn't even looking at him. Do we have an ice out? Maybe doghouse alert. That's more doghouse iced out. Yeah, yeah. Running back is a fumble, and then you it's get in the doghouse. You get but, in a guy's doghouse. But you can get iced out as a wide receiver. You can. Um, also, fun stat. If I were to just ask you off the top of your head, what do you think the Steelers' record is in their last fifteen games? Uh pretty good. They're eleven and eleven and four. Yeah, because they finished the season like. Remember the the whole talk at the first part part of the season was is Mike Tomlin going to go under five hundred? Yeah, and they ended up nine and eight. Yeah, so the Steelers have been just good. They've been winning weird games. They've been winning them in in strange ways, but they just win. They figure out a way. Kenny Pickett might be Mister Fourth Quarter. I like that. He is. Uh, Jake, your nerd nugget. Good timing we got because Pittsburgh leads the NFL with three wins this season when trailing after the third quarter. The Steelers have also won 14 games since 2020 trailing after the third quarter. That's also most in the league. Mr. Fourth Quarter. He's Mr. Fourth Quarter. I like He's that. He's Mr. Fourth Quarter. Also, Mike Tomlin met Glorilla this week. Yeah. I'm a big fan. Huge Glorilla fan. I know, Hank, you're a big fan too, right? Huge. 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 Yeah. Hank, you look very corporate today. Thank you. Is it the vest? No, it's, Hank looks it's, like he got off the golf course today. I wish I would golf. I did not. Uh, this is the perfect vest weather today. It is. It mm-hmm. is beautiful vest weather. Uh, and it's not. There's not a lot of time for vest weather. Like it's no. about to be cold. Vest weather's over. No, but you can go vest under the coat. Yeah. Because then you but go I, coat off vest in the office. I saw my opportunity. I took it. Yeah. You. You. That's. That's it right there. You. You just grabbed it. Vest weather. Yeah. What is it? Uh, luck is up. Op- no. Luck is what happens when opportunity meets, meets preparation. Preparation. He was prepared for vac- vest weather. Yeah. I'm woefully underprepared for vest. I don't think I own a single vest. I have two, and I never wear them. So I'm I, done. I saw I, my opportunity, and I, I got took in, them. I had I a vest in. phase, and then 
when like the entire Wall Street accounting bros took over vests, I I ditched it. But I might get back in a vest. I might be a vest guy this winter. It's fun, it, especially puffy vests. I don't really like Hank's look right now. He looks like trash. But a puffy <laughs> vest. Oh, sorry, I forgot you were there. Uh, a puffy vest. Mm-hmm. Looks nice. I like the ones that have the like ribs on them. You yeah. know what I'm saying? The seams that go down the side. Yeah, yeah. The puffy vest. Yeah, yeah. that's good. That's yeah. good. They make you look jacked up too. Yeah. You know who looks great in a vest is Vrabel. Yes. Vrabel is a big Vrabel's vest a guy. Big time vest guy. Uh, okay. Next game up. Rams at Cowboys. I have a theory that I would like to throw out there. Uh, the Rams stink. I don't know if they stink. <laughs> Okay, that's my theory, and I'll explain I, my theory. Were they ever good? I, I think. Well, no, they were never good. But here's what happened: the Rams are, are mid; they're decidedly mid. I think they might stink. And here's what happened: we every year there's like one or two teams that have a great week one, and then it sticks in our head for a while, maybe too long. The Rams beat the Seahawks week one. They were like maybe six point underdogs because remember going into the season, mm-hmm. the Rams were. I think their over under for wins was five and a half or something like mm-hmm. that. They were not supposed to be good. They beat the Seahawks. Everyone's like, oh shit. They might be good. Dapuka, look at this. They're they're good. Uh since then, they have their two wins after the Seahawks week one win was against the Colts in overtime. Colts not that not, not that good. They're frisky, not that good. And the Cardinals in week six, Cardinals stink. Mm-hmm. Their losses are Niners, Bengals, Eagles, Steelers. So the question I ask is, are the Cowboys closer to the Niners, Bengals, Eagles, Steelers, or the Colts, Cardinals? I think it's the former, not the latter. Yeah, I'm not saying that they stink, though. I'd say that they're probably going to lose this game. I'm going to bet on them to lose this game, uh, especially because McVay's got – he's he had the baby. The baby's he here. He can't score a touchdown. A head coach can't score a touchdown. Um, Matt Stafford does have a homecoming game, kind of, right, mm-hmm. in Dallas. Yep. People forget Highland he went, Park. To, uh, went to high school with Clayton Kershaw. So I don't I don't think that the Rams stink though. I think that they're a perfectly mid team. The Cowboys are capable of playing perfectly mid teams very well. It's so, just a working theory that they might yeah, stink because we'll, it, it we'll is keep an eye on them. You know how we do do that where it's like week one, bad or or good. I mean what when uh the Cardinals killed the Titans week one, whatever it was a few years ago, the Titans I think ended up being okay. Mm-hmm. It's just week one always has one of those weird things that where was, you're like, Oh fuck. That was the Taylor Luan game, right? Yeah, I didn't want to bring that up. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. a very important part of NFL history. Yes. But um, yeah, I I do think I think that the Rams are perfectly average. I think the Cowboys are an above average team. And I am a believer in the triplets though. That's what we're calling Matt Stafford. Puka Nakua Puka. and Koopa Cup. Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup. Koopa Cup. Koopa Cup would be cool. Koopa Cup is a good. Puka and that, Koopa. That Puka, that's a uh, an event in Mario Kart. Koopa and Puka. Yeah. I like that. That sounds like, uh, that could also be like a, a Disney movie with two, you know, a fat animal and a small animal like Pomone and Tumba. Yeah. Tumba? What is that? Timon and Pip? Timon, Timon and, and Pumba. And Pumba. Timon, yeah. Yeah. You got it. Thanks, Hank. Stack correct. Uh, no, you mentioned it. Put this in the tickler. No. Nakua Matata. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Yep, that will be on Boomers. Uh, you mentioned that the Cowboys are can absolutely beat a mid or bad team. Uh, Dak versus bad teams. He is 27, 13, and 2 against the spread versus teams under 500. Mm-hmm. And 17 and 26 against the spread versus teams above 500. Yeah, I also think that McCarthy looks at an opportunity to coach against McVay. Like, if I if I beat this guy, I'll finally get that respect. Yeah. You know? So, I, I do like the Cowboys this week. And the Rams... I, I actually think that having a baby during a week for a coach is probably way more impactful than if a player has a baby during the week and they miss a practice, yes, right? Yes, yes. Like, I think that he's probably not getting a lot of sleep. He's not spending as much time just grinding film. Good points. We'll see. We'll Good see. points. Uh, Jake, your nerd nugget. Cowboys rookie kicker Brandon Aubrey is one of six kickers in NFL history to begin a career with at least 16 straight field goal makes and is closing in on the NFL record uh, of 18 and there's the jinx. straight. He's mm-hmm. 16 of 16 on field goals and 12 of 13 on extra points. Can we bet on him to miss a kick? We should be able to. Because yeah. that I was mean, the jinxiest jinx of all time. Credit to the Cowboys. Well, you said it out loud. Yeah, but they wrote it down. And if, gave it a jinx, I don't think you, a, a written jinx in a, in a media playbook 
versus a spoken jinx. The, the percentage of announcer jinxes is probably so low because they say it every nah, time. But you and always it doesn't remember actually them. Happen. No, you no, always yeah. remember them. Jake, this, you're bringing stats into an equation that yeah. absolutely does not need. We just need to go with our balls on this one. That's <laughs> anytime an announcer says that a kicker's good, right. he, he's the worst. You guys, kicker Jake is like all announcers' lives matter. This is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't uh, the Rams had Mar right? Yeah, they yeah. had the former kicker of they the Cowboys him. that just missed the revenge game. That missed nine field goals or whatever they in the just last caught weeks. Him. And they cut him this week. That's that's tough. I wanted to see a Mar revenge game. Yeah. Um, okay. Next up, Vikings at Packers. I only have one stat for this game, and I have a feel. The stat is uh, how many touchdowns, rushing touchdowns, the Vikings have this year. Zero. Zero is correct. That's pretty crazy. It is zero rushing touchdowns. My feel is, I think the Packers stink. I think Jordan Love's not good, but. The Vikings just beat the Niners on Monday Night Football in front of the world. They're going to play at Lambeau against a very stinky Packers team. You have to bet the Packers. I don't know about that because the Vikings the Vikings seem like they're kind of exactly. rolling into form right why, now. Why would you say that? Monday Night Football. They had a great game against, <laughs> yeah. against a really good team that yeah. was kind of banged up and injured. Yeah. But I'm – Big Cat, come on. I, I saw Monday Night Football. I they did too. Good. And I, I, I went, I I went not, gut. I was like, yeah. oh, my God, the, the Vikings are – are what a one point favorite against the Packers and Lambeau? Like this is a hammer time on the Vikings. It's like, nope, Dan, you do this to yourself all the time. You watched one awesome game and you're like, the Vikings are awesome. I'm, I'm I gonna... have a hot tip. Okay. Ooh. And by hot tip, I mean I was walking on the halls earlier and just heard someone in a room. I don't know who it was, and I didn't listen to the full conversation. But as I walked by, I overheard someone saying, "78 percent of the money's on the Vikings." Yeah. Uh -huh. Don't know if that's true. I believe it. But it's a hot tip. It does sound like it would be true. It's a hold your nose pick. The Packers stink. They do stink. And all, I think I'm going to ride with Creed, though. Because before the last game, so we talked about Kirk Cousins loving Creed, the Texas Rangers loving Creed. I didn't realize this at the time. Kirk Cousins has replaced the team prayer, which means a lot to Kirk Cousins, mm -hmm. with everybody listening to Creed in the locker room. That's nice. So for the last two games, they've been on their Creed shit. Oh. I, I might wait to find out how much Scott Stapp is being played in that locker room. Before I make my yeah, final pick, sources. but I am right now. I'm currently square as fuck, and I'm going to ride with the Vikings. Yeah, I just I, it's a total feel because I really do think the Packers are not good. But it any given Sunday, uh, Jake Packers quarterback Jordan Love leads the NFL in second half passing yards per game. Is tied for number one in the league in second half passing touchdowns per game, and number two in the league in second half offensive touchdowns this season. Yeah, because they're behind. Second half, Mr. Jordan second Love. half, yeah, Mr. Second half, <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you play from behind, Mr. Second half, Mr. Yeah. Second half. Okay. Um. All right. Next up, next game up, Patriots the Dolphins. All right. Patriots Tyreek. Dolphins. Tyreek is going to play. Damn. Yeah. Mm. It was just announced. That was the weirdest thing ever. When two was like, "Hope we get Tyreek back soon," and everyone's like, "Huh? What? Huh? What'd you just say?" It is. It does feel like a get right game for Miami, doesn't it? Okay, I agree, but I feel like the and we talk about this with Kyle Long uh, coming up. Great interview with him. I do think the Dolphins, if there is ever a look ahead, it is the Chiefs next week, and maybe it's not like look ahead. They come out flat, but maybe look ahead. We pack it in as as quickly as we know this game is good, and and the back door is wide open. It's I mean, also a super look ahead because like. That's a lot of travel they have to do. Yeah. That's a lot of travel. It's yeah, you got it. Yeah, and there's, game. there's nothing worse than having like a really long trip ahead of you. Mm -hmm. that's so it's the, a super, I yeah, hate that it's, that's, that's hanging over their that's head That's when I'm at my more. lowest. Do you think they packed all their shit? Getting Probably. ready to go over to Germany? Wait, do we know their plans? We don't know yet. We got to find we're out. We're only betting it on that. Because if, whoever goes later, yes, fade them. We, that's what we've learned. That's a Germany's a long ways away, but I feel like... It, they probably already have their shit packed going to this game if they're leaving on Monday. Yeah. You don't have time to, you know, go home. That's a big suitcase you got to bring over there if you're going on Monday. But I do like – I like Miami in this game, and maybe it's just me reacting to the Patriots looking decent against the Bills. Mac Jones and winning thinking, the Super Bowl. So, Oh, my, oh, yeah. wait, wait. You hear this one? Congrats to Hank and Mac Jones for winning the Week 7 Super Bowl. Oh, yeah, congrats. I had heard that. It was yeah. big. You guys, it was you big. loved doing that to everyone. You needed for the last one. twenty years. <laughs> you needed one big time. The bill, I mean, it's the fucking bills. If we beat, you know, the Chiefs, that's that's the Super Bowl. Oh, oh, oh I like you. That. Did, you bet on the Bills last week, eh? You did. Yeah, I did. I lost. I'm doing bad on my picks. Uh, 
No longer hung over though. Nah. Oh, okay. <laughs> It's yeah. a little I'm just a little foggy. <laughs> yeah, we gotta have some day beers on Friday. Yeah, we got a Halloween coming up. We're going to Madison. Might, yeah. This this is a week I'm I'm giving myself till next like Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Okay, to the get right spot. Yeah. <laughs> That's your get right spot I'm Tuesday. Back in the gym Tuesday. Everyone tweet <laughs> Hank next Tuesday. Be like, get right Welcome spot. Welcome back. Let's go. Yes. Uh you you feel confident? No. Oh, okay. No. What's the weather forecast? Do we know? Hot. It's going to be hot in Miami. I'm sure. Yeah, two sidelines. It's mm. not the heat. It's the humidity. That's true. Yeah, they always say that. I just, Rain. I don't know. Rain. Rain. Oh, oh, potential. That would maybe Florida probably help changes. the that Patriots. Help the Pats, yeah. Jump uh, up a little bit. Mac Jones is 0-5 against the spread in his career versus the Dolphins. Yeah, would never beat Tua. You've never beaten Tua? No. Damn. That's surprising. That's tough. I think that's a good sign, though, because you, know, you know Belichick is like, we got to beat Tua. Yeah. Mm-hmm. got to beat Tua. So, are you going to bet on Moneyline, yes. Oh, wow. Have to. Okay. I like I like, like we've talked about it. I don't I don't I don't feel good going into the game, but then before the game I'm like, why won't we just win this game? Except oh, you really are. You really are Bills, a tanking team. You know. Welcome to the welcome. That's exactly that's every single Bears game. Yeah. yeah. This is yeah, this is a great opportunity to play spoiler. It really is. Yeah. yeah if we beat the Bills and Dolphins, I will have been You're back. dead accurate about And guess and who's next? Spoilers. And the Jets, too. And guess who's next? Jets? No. Commies. Oh, mm, nice. That'll be good. White yeah. Good luck spoiling that one. Mm. Uh, Jake, your nerd nugget. Well, first off, Tyree Kill, when he faced the media today regarding his hip, he said, he, I just wanted some attention, man, because my mom wouldn't talk to me, so I needed some attention from somebody. Okay. I respect okay. that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I get it. Uh, I get it. Miami has had a player record multiple sacks in four straight games by four different players. Week four at Buffalo, Andrew Van Ginkle. Week five against the Giants, Zach Sealer. Week six against the Panthers, Christian Wilkins. Week seven at Philadelphia, Bradley Chubb. So they're all eaten. Uh, you remember Bradley Chubb? Yeah. I feel like yeah, last gonna, week, we, two we sacks. Stopped, we stopped talking about old Chubb for a while, didn't we? Yeah, he's good. He is good. He's good. Uh, it's, so with Tyreek Hill, it's funny. Like he, That's like a dog that pretends to have an injury. Yeah. To get it. I, I had a dog that for about two years would only have – uh, a hip injury when it was at home with my parents and then I took it to college a couple times it was able to walk everywhere go up and down steps and yeah. go back home where there was another dog be like oh no my hip hurts come scratch me for yeah me. yeah that's what Tyreek Hill needs some doing. attention yeah uh okay so Tyreek Hill's playing uh next up Eagles at Commanders mm. the little boy off I their little boy was never a that was never anything said by anybody that game. Oh, it was little you small. You little small is little, what was said. Little you small. Fuck yeah! Got the win! Little you small! <laughs> Fuck yeah! Small. Little you, you small. small. Yeah. yeah I, th- I think little boy was set also. Yeah, because you were saying big boy, little boy. Yeah, I, was saying throughout throughout the, I was saying we were doing big boy plays on you. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Like that was a little boy play. Correct. There was definitely that thrown yeah, around. Well, it's, sure. There's a lot of boys. This there's, is this is bigger than a little boy game. This is a perm game. Oh yes. Yeah. Max and I agreed to bet a perm. Oh, oh beautiful. On this I game. Forgot about that. So one of us is going to have to go to Sport Clips and uh, and get our hair permed up. I love it. So Max, what are we going to do? Because it can't. You can't do it straight up, right? Because the Eagles are what six and a half point favorites. Sh- should we just do the spread? Oh, well, I mean, Max, that would suck for you. Like if you win by three, you won the game, and you got to get a perm. Yeah, no, that's true. I say you what, almost got him. What there. about? <laughs> <laughs> what about three? What about three even? Um, f- deal, fine. Okay, that was that's a great fine. negotiation. Yeah. he just two He's seconds ago said no. To you should have just said and straight then he agreed up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Should have just said straight up. So Max is going to buy a car soon, and he's like, I suck at negotiating. Can somebody help me out? I told him I'd negotiate for him because I love doing that. Max, I just I just ran circles around you. That was so bad, yeah, dude. I'm not, a, I'm not a negotiator. Jesus Christ. How how you doing, Max? Uh, good. This game's must win for the Eagles. No, I so. meant in general. Um, how are you doing? It's fine. I, it, It's fine. Okay. He, fine. The, the episode popped off. Popped off. I told Max, too. Max, I think... With this last recent tragic loss and clips and everything. Collapse. I think Max has actually crossed the threshold and that if the Eagles win the Super Bowl, people would be legitimately happy for him. I don't think so. No, I do. Well, right Some. Now, no, some. Big cat, not you, uh, Hank. You fucking hate him. Right now, you're right. If the Eagles won the Super Bowl tomorrow, people would be like, okay, good for Max. He deserves one. But you're forgetting that to get to a Super Bowl, they'll yeah. have to endure like three Max. months of Max being obnoxious. That's true. 
and then the one. So you need a team. Being I also you I need also a team to just start their I'm the first being game obnoxious. being. <laughs> yeah, that's a lie. You you need a team to start their first game in the Super Bowl. I, I guess I don't know. Yeah, I'm a different I'm a different man. I'm 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 a different man right now. I, I think I think you've developed a, a big fan base of people that really enjoy seeing this content. So it's like that that market now exists. Yeah, yeah. you created the market. No, the sadness market is booming. It's it also a market that really dislikes it. Yeah, but you know what? Those guys that's jealousy. They, and they also just completely over exaggerate everything. It's the guys who are like uh, Max is on the show for for two hours, like. This is it's crazy. That's it, just the that's just the anyone that's on the show that's not named Big Cat or PFT market. Correct. Yeah, and, and we've all we've and all everyone, everyone's it. had their fair share of the ire there. And, and Max also the fact that Philly keeps losing in these big moments is the reason why you're in these prominent positions on the show. So it's not like the entire show is just Max all the time. He can't help it, but his teams are losers, so we have to feature. Him. Yeah, you've been in big moments. And Max, uh, I I had my my brain kind of switched a couple of years ago when I realized like people are going to complain about everything, and it's actually a compliment because it's what we do with our sports teams, where it's like you root for your sports team and you're like fire that guy, that yeah. guy sucks. That's no different than people who are like I listen to every PMT, I fucking hate Max. Like, well, <laughs> yeah, you're gonna find something to complain about, and like it's okay. Like you can complain about everything, you can complain about anything, like. Go go go! Do it. It means you care. Yeah, we like, we want people to care. Yeah, yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How's your has your mom said anything to you? Uh, my mom was my mom was good. Um, my dad thought it was really funny. My mom was also my mom's also a huge Phillies fan. Like, that's her number one team. She said that uh, it was nice to hear how sad I was after the game because it made her feel feel better about oh, that's good. so you're providing See? a useful service to yeah. dejected yeah. Phillies fans yeah, that was like I feel like your parents had to have loved the the movie clips I love ridiculous right uh, now I don't know if those were just those anyone can watch that and find humor uh, in them I haven't watched any of any those. any uh, last thing Max any word on people throwing out the idea that you might have early onset Fleming yeah <laughs> so people were um, saying this online uh, that Max's hand motions, the the fist, the screaming. When he was tinting his yeah, fingers. Yeah, tinting his fingers. On the couch, that was just my like, favorite. Just like it, people are saying, Max, like, hey, Max, do you, are you looking in your closet and being like, ooh, that's a good shirt. I want you on that. Yeah, that's that's really the biggest worry for me is. You have early onset Fleming. The biggest worry for me with early onset Fleming is <laughs> I do like to like chew on water bottles, which is uh -huh. the biggest red flag of anything. Well, Fle Frank is we love Frank. Frank yeah. is the absolute best. So it wouldn't be the worst if you got full blood uh, fledged full Fleming. Yeah. Yeah. You know, full blown Fleming. Maybe someday. Maybe okay. someday. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I got I got a question for you, Big Cat. Yeah. Do you think that the Eagles Commanders series do, is that becoming a throw out the record books? Series? It might be series because they do the Commanders are always way worse than the Eagles, except going back to what was it, twenty twenty? Yes. When Doug Peterson uh, pulled all the starters in Week Seventeen, um, they are always worse, but they always play them very very tough. I I feel like this is a throw out the record book. I game. agree with you. I agree with you. I also think. Uh, oh, by the way, sack watch. Uh, Sam Howell, 40 sacks on pace for 97. He went the other direction. It's it's insane how many sacks he's <laughs> yeah. taking. Like like David Carr, when he was in the league, it was nuts his first 76 year. 76 sacks. People were like, will somebody please step in and help him? Sam Howell is on pace to just dust David yeah, Carr. Yeah, dust him. Uh, and it's not even the 17-game schedule because not that he's on pace for 21 more sacks. Uh, Max, last question for you. Are you worried about Jalen Hurts' knee? Uh, no, they said it's like a pain thing. He's just going to play through it. He's mm, a warrior. It's just a pain mm. thing. He's an absolute, mm. he's an absolute dog. I, I trust I, my guy I out there. I think you should be. And you why should does be. the human body experience pain, Max? Is it because everything's fine? Yeah, he's fine. He, he's fine. Okay, it's yeah, he's good. fine. Okay. But I will say, Kevin Byard game. Yeah. Yeah, dream we, team. Yeah. Howie. Dream team. Not dream team, but Howie. like, you love having guys. Yeah. We're talking about guys. You Kevin love Byard's a guy. Another guy. The, I think that Jalen Hurts' knee is a problem. He's he, wearing a brace on it. And he also was asked about it, and they were like, is it a concern? Would it affect you going forward? He said, I hope not. Yeah, it's going to affect That him. was on Sunday. and then the next No, that was his press conference. He said, I hope not. Yeah, on, that was after the game on Sunday. Oh, okay. And then like going forward, they were like, yes, it won't be an, it won't be an issue for the." But the I fact mean, that we're even talking about it is kind of an issue. 
Yeah, but but it, some guys are built different. He's a dog. Okay, he might be wearing it just in case the stadium collapses on him again. Yeah, just just to be sure. I just he's throwing a lot of picks, fumbles, yeah, but the knee. No, the, he, he doesn't look like himself. Can we admit that, Max? The factor fiction. The pick in the no, last answer game was the question. A, answer factor the question. Fiction was a tip. Answer the question. Does, Does Jalen, Jalen Hurts, Hurts look, look like, like himself? himself? I didn't like how in unison you guys. That was were beautiful. Right there. It was great. Um, the last game, I yes, I will say in the Dol in the Dolphins game, yes, he looked like himself. I don't care what you say. Yes, <laughs> I don't think he looks like himself. Okay. He threw one pick that got tipped, and he played a flawless football game after that. Who would you rather have? Fumble. Who would you rather have? Jalen Hurts this season or Jalen Hurts from last season? Who was better? And in totality, yeah. last season. Okay, so he doesn't look like himself. But in it's a week by week league. <laughs> Okay. On Sunday night, he looked really good. All right. I'm just – listen, I'm grasping at straws here. I'm trying to find reasons to, to think that the Commanders can win this game. So, I, I'll take whatever I can. Also, the Commanders have hired a nerd this week. Ooh. We got a nerd. So, it's Eugene Shen. He is now, like, the senior vice president of analytics. We didn't have a guy like that before. I like that. So, we got him. He was, on the, uh, he was on the Jaguars for a while. He was on the Ravens. Then he went off to manage a trust fund or a hedge fund. Yeah. And now he's back. And I just – it's a good hire. I think Josh Harris made a good hire. We needed a guy like that. But also, I'm putting myself in Ron Rivera's shoes, who is not a heavy analytics guy, yeah. shall we say. He's not really a big anything guy. But now we hired a nerd. Rivera is probably not going to coach after the season's over. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be fired midseason, but he's definitely not coming back this year. So if you have a nerd in place right now telling Ron Rivera what to do with his team – how is Rivera going to react to that? Is he going to be like, yeah, do whatever you want with right, my team? Or is, right. he, is he going to actually like take this guy's advice, put it into practice? I just, I feel like giving a guy who's on his deathbed a nerd to tell him how to fix things is just going to kill him faster. Yes. It's like if you gave Jimmy Carter a social media manager right now. Yeah. Like, okay, this guy's going to run your Instagram account. It's over. He's like, okay, just pull the plug. It's over. I'm done. Yeah, it's over. All right, nerd nugget. Eagles wide receiver A.J. Brown tied an NFL record last week when he posted his fifth straight game with 125-plus receiving yards, joining Calvin Johnson in 2012 and Pat Studsill in 1966. He's also the third player in Eagles history to register five straight 100-plus yard receiving performances, joining T.O. and Harold Jackson. He's very yeah. good. He's awesome. He's, He's very good. Terry McLaurin's NFC East lead might be dwindling It's in by trouble. The moment. It's in yeah. trouble. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay, next game, Jets-Giants. MetLife, the MetLife Bowl. Mm -hmm. um, Jets going on the road. Jets going on the road. Tyrod Taylor is better than Daniel Jones. I think so. I think he is. It's so crazy how much the Giants fucked that up. Like, you had Daniel Jones for four years, and he was, what, uh, the somewhere between, like, the 15th and 20th best quarterback? Some, like, he, okay he, he played pretty good in spurts last year. Well, no, no, no. So, so I'm saying the, first, the previous four years. Yeah. Yeah. Last year, he played good. Yeah. Why didn't the Giants say, hey, is this the outlier? Maybe we should franchise tag well, him. Might, they were just hoping that this is who he is. Yeah, now. right. Like, hey, let's franchise tag him. See if he's that guy again instead of being like, no, that's that's him. We only use the does he look at himself if a player is playing worse than they did right. the year before. With Daniel Jones last year, we, they should have been like, is Daniel Jones, is he really playing like himself right now? And it, the answer would be no. No, at right. That point. But still, like, you – if you're in that position as a team, you think that this is just the brand new Daniel. Yeah, Jones. it's like if I see myself, I see a good picture of myself and I look skinny, I'm like, am I skinny now? Yeah. No. Um, fun stat, the Giants winning last week against the Commanders, that was their first home win since the boat picture. Really? No, I just made that up. I, that's I, I mean, I could believe any that's, of them. That sounds like it would be. Mm -hmm. uh, my favorite thing in terms of storylines going into this week is on WFAN. Yeah, did you Don see LaGreca. Did you see, was it Don LaGreca that was talking about Zach Wilson? Oh, that? no. Uh, I was thinking Don LaGreca talking about uh, Chris Russo, which was great. No, this Called is, him a weakling, which yeah, is an all-time insult. Because Russo needs to retire, right? Yeah, he does. He's like, you're yeah. a weakling. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great insult. Yeah, it really is. That's an insult that you only get on <laughs> Sports Talk Radio. Yeah. You, you, you get bummed and you get fraud and weakling. weakling. Those are the big three. Yeah. But there was another guy. I don't have his name in front of me, but he went in on Zach Wilson because Zach Wilson, during the bye week, went to Utah with his girlfriend. He went apple picking. He went. Well, this guy was like, this guy's going apple picking. You're supposed to be the quarterback. You should be in the film room the entire week. What the fuck? You should be at the facility the entire week studying in the meeting room by yourself. He's like, any other position, you can leave. 
but the quarterback I want my I don't want my quarterback traveling with his family uh, during the bye week. I want my quarterback to be an incel. It, That's what I want. Also, uh, Zach Wilson's definitely in the category of too much information can be dangerous for him. Yeah, like you you don't want to just have him overloaded with ideas. Well, the entire premise of the Jets' offense being good is just minimize the amount of time that Zach Wilson has with the ball in his hands. Yeah. Figure out a way to get Garrett Wilson on slants that Zach Wilson can hit. Yeah. Yeah. Just play on defense more. Yeah. Play your defense. <laughs> yeah. Punt the ball on first. Uh, all right. Nerd Nugget. The Jets defense has an active streak of 24 straight games without allowing a 300-yard passer, the second longest in the NFL behind New Orleans. Whoa. Okay. Good segue. Saints and Colts next. Uh, here's a fun fact. Do you know that we're in week eight? The Colts are the only team to score 20 points in every game this season. I did not know 20 that. 20 points or more. That is a very fun That's pretty fact. fun. Also, uh, the NFL apologized to Jim Irsay personally. For yes, the calls I saw that. The end. So Jim Irsay put out a tweet saying, like, just a heads up, the NFL has admitted to us that they screwed up the calls at the end of the game. So hang the banner, Colts fans. You guys uh, should have won that game. We actually do think that you should have won that yes, game. Yes, you should have. That was bullshit the way that it came down. So maybe maybe Jim Mercy just hallucinated Roger Goodell coming in and apologizing to him. Yes. That's probably just as likely. But, uh, yeah, the Colts, I, I, I mean, their offense is fun. They are fun. With Gardner Minshew, you're either going to get a, a crappy, weird, uh, awful performance where he takes some shots and they don't pan out, or he could actually step in and win you a game. I think Gardner Minshew, I'm going to bet some Gardner Minshew props this week because the Saints do play a lot of man coverage, and that's usually what he does well. Mm -hmm. So I I don't know if they can win this game, but I am going to bet some Gardner Minshew props and have some fun. He does stink against the zone. Yeah, he does. He's, he does. He doesn't understand the concept. He's just like, wait, I want to throw it there. What the fuck? He's probably There's like, two guys there. I think he sees his own defense, and like if you're playing basketball – against his own and pick up you're like these pussies yeah he probably sees his own defense he's like these guys are a bunch of pussies yeah they won't try me man i'm man i'm man and tries to make crazy throws right because he's like I'm a, I'm a man these guys are bitches and he's perfect for man coverage because he's like fuck it i'm gonna throw it there yeah give my guy a chance uh i like that dennis allen is so bad and so dumb he's uh now into his coach speak where he's like fuck everyone you guys don't know what you're talking about he said this week you get in the middle of the season, and there's generally not a lot of people from outside your building that are coming in that are going to make significant changes. We've got our guys, and we're going to be hard at work trying to fix some issues. Mm -hmm. You you got this, Dennis. You actually have Sean Payton's guys. Yeah, you got this. But I, I just like that being like, no, 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 you guys don't know this building. I also like the fact that by saying that, he's justifying his entire employment. Yeah. He's like, that's why I'm here is because I'm a guy that's been in the building yeah, for a while. Yeah, and I'm going to fix this. And I'm going to fix everything. Yeah. Uh, we are on coin alert. Mm. With the Saints. Remember the Jets coin? Yeah. There's a Saints coin. Oh, hell yes. And it's undefeated right now. So this week, uh, they are predicting a win against the Colts. The coin is. Okay. They're predicting the Saints to go 11-6 and six on the season. So they're predicting a win against the Colts, then a win against the Bears, win against the Vikings, win against the Falcons, and then they're going to beat the Lions. So we're going to find out in short order Ooh. whether or not this coin is legit or if it's a fraud. So they have a win this week they have a win this week okay but we don't i it's early it's early in the coins history week eight is when you start you know separating you start, pay, you start paying attention like is this counterfeit or is it legit yes uh okay uh nerd nugget you got it 20 points colts only team Shh, mm. however damn. indianapolis because don't however me do you feel good about I'm, the fact that oh i love it you, that get, you doing, get me like once a week you like yeah. stealing the nerd nuggets yeah. but then you also have to look at yourself in the mirror and being like i'm i'm a nerd i'm casually well he just dropped oh, he dropped well, a however i have a little me. context <laughs> go ahead it. however and it'll be tougher this week because the saints only allow 18 points per game however however mm. also however uh shout out to blake who won the Colts tickets. Contest. Oh yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Got, he says he will be dressing up as Gardner Minshew going to the game. I oh, love it. Looking forward to That's, seeing that. Love it's a great it. Halloween. I, I hope to see some people dressing up as Mr. Ursay for Halloween in the stands too. It would be nice. Yep. It would be nice. Uh, okay, next up, Falcons, Titans, Titans throwback jersey. Will Levis? Mm. Maybe Malik Willis. I hope it's Will. I don't. I, I Vrabel like hinted at a two quarterback thing. I don't. Don't do that. Don't do that, Vrabes. Yeah, so it's going to be tough to erase the stink, much like uh, how we were talking about with the Steelers week one when they got dominated by the Niners. It's hard to move on past that. Uh, Malik Willis's first game was an all-time bad performance. Yes. Like, really, really bad. And he, I think he got better. I hope well, he got no. better. The, wait, you're saying his week one, his 
first game last year? No, his first game ever that he yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because he came in, remember, in the London game and that was very bad. But somehow I don't think it was as bad. Well as that his running very remember first. the staying in bounds. I, I do remember that. That was a that was a brain fart. That was very that was bad. a brain fart. Yeah. Um I'm hoping for Will Levis just because I'd like to see him play. Yeah. I do think that uh the Titans have a leg up because they were they spent more time preparing for the throwback helmets than they did for travel plans to London. Yes. They've been practicing with the throwback helmets for like two weeks now. They're ready to go. They're ready to roll. And um, who knows more? Who has the advantage? Is, does Arthur Smith have more of an advantage having coached with Vrabel? <gasps> mm. Or does Vrabel have more of an advantage working with Arthur Smith for all those years? Hmm. I think Arthur Smith. You I think, think so? the person who's learning from someone learns. It's like the student in the, uh, pu- in the pupil in the... Master and the pupil? Mm-hmm. Was that right? Is a pupil student? Pupil student, yeah. Yeah, I got it. Whatever. Uh, I, I haven't slept all week. Uh, I think that the person learning from someone learns all their tricks and then adds new tricks. Okay. That Vrabel doesn't know. Unless you're Belichick, in which case you just don't teach them certain things. So that yes. when you have to beat them as a head coach later, Correct. you've got that. Correct. Uh, and Arthur Smith, I, maybe my favorite uh, battle going on right now in football is Arthur, Arthur Smith versus fantasy football uh, players and prop betters, yeah, because they are pissed. I think he intentionally does. I it. love it. I'm pretty sure. I want him to just. I want him to just. I want to see Tyler Algier and running 40 times, and Cordell Patterson being the only one who catches the ball. Yeah, he's being openly antagonistic to fantasy it's great. football players. It's I, great. I, I do like that a lot. But actually, we haven't had this conversation about Bijan because Bijan has looked really, really good when he's played, and then last week. He only got one carry, right? Yeah. And that one carry seemed like a fuck you to people because yes. if he was actually, uh, if he had an illness, if he had a migraine or whatever, you'd think that he would have just not given him the ball at all, right? Mm-hmm. But giving him the ball one time seems like a fuck you. Is Bijan Robinson somehow in Arthur Smith's doghouse? Okay. We, I, might, we might be on doghouse watch with him. I thought about this. And then another thing I thought about with this situation is could Arthur Smith be a sneaky genius? Could he be saying, we just spent a lot of money on this first-round pick, running back, don't put too many miles on him early in the season. Bijan is going to look that much faster late in the year. He might be doing like a Derrick Henry, Track type yeah. thing. Yeah. Like, let him get cooking later. Like, I, they won the game without Bijan. Guess what? That's, you know, 15 carries. He doesn't have it on his legs when you get to December. Yeah, but you'd also, you would have liked to win some of those close games you were in early true, in the season. True, true. Uh, but... And I actually don't think he's in the doghouse, but it is something that we should pay attention to. Yeah, I heard just there was a report that he vaped in his face. There was a report that he is in the doghouse. In fact, yeah. and in terms of doghouses, uh, Belichick's doghouse is the worst, yeah. right? Saban's got to suck time. really bad. Mike Vix. Yeah. Yep. I bet Sean Payton's probably probably pretty bad too. Yeah, Sean Payton's doghouse. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Nerd Dan Nugget. Campbell. Dan Campbell's dog. Ah, yeah. uh, Dan Campbell. I feel like he would put you in the doghouse. He'd still come give you a pet. Yeah, come in and like get sneak you some food. Yeah, when be his like you know, I love you. I don't want to put you in this doghouse. Yeah. Look what you made me do, babe. His wife's asleep that at kind night. Of, that he, kind of guy. He sneaks back. He's like, hey, shh, this is gonna be our little secret. Yeah, I'm not supposed to feed you, but you know you're a good boy. The only reason you're in the doghouse, I love you so much. Yeah, Titans so, it's basically a pimp. Dan yeah. Campbell's a pimp. <laughs> Titans running back Derrick Henry can record his 39th total 100-yard rushing game this week, including regular season and playoffs. He would surpass Eddie George, who has 38 for second most, and Earl Campbell has 40. Mm. So Derrick Henry. Wow. Titans have a yeah. really good history of running backs. Yeah. Yeah. Or Chris Johnson. The Oilers do, too. Yeah. But Chris Johnson, Eddie George, Derrick Henry. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, you want to go Earl Campbell? It's pretty crazy. Yeah, they do. Um, We should put this in for July. July. 27th july 27th is a saturday okay so july 25th thursday let's do all-time rankings of position groups i also have hank teaches us an econ you like class that? that day yeah, i do like i that. like that like run <laughs> well, that's a big day for the show. oh that's huge okay great we'll double up but yeah all-time rankings for position groups franchise wise mm-hmm. niners niners quarterbacks would you go Niners quarterbacks? You could go Packers quarterbacks, unfortunately. Um, mm. Yeah, there's, it'll be good. It'll be yeah. good. That's going to be a lot of fun. That's going to be a lot of fun because I do think running backs for Titans might be – they might be number one. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, uh, let's go to the next game. Texans-Panthers. Frank Wright giving up play calling duty. Major cuck behavior. I have – 
this is probably going to sound stupid when it end when we play the game and the Texans beat the Panthers because the Panthers stink. I think Bryce Young's going to look good today. I think the Panthers might win their first game of the season. So the Panthers off a of bye. Um, they are desperate for a win right now. They're trying something new on the offensive play calling side, and it does seem like this is a big, big week if you're a Panthers fan to just have Bryce go out there and not – not get blown off the field by C.J. Stroud. It, for your own mental future, for your for your own well-being, you want to see Bryce Young look like he belongs on the same field as C.J. Stroud. Yes, and Thomas Brown, the new offensive coordinator, I think, like, so he's McVay Tree. He was with the Rams. He also was with Georgia with Nick Chubb, running backs coach. He was with Wisconsin when Melvin Gordon had 2,500 yards, running backs coach. I feel like he's going to run the ball and get wide receivers open. Yeah, and who's the running back? Is it Miles Sanders? Sure. Is it? Chuba. Yeah, they, Miles they Sanders Chuba. and Chuba Hubbard. Chuba yeah, yeah. On yeah, yeah. My, remember Miles Sanders? Yeah. He was pretty good. So I Maybe give him the ball. I think this might be the first time. The uh, It's also the fourth time. Uh, this might be a nerd nugget I'm stealing. The fourth time the number one and number two pick in the draft played in that same season. Oh, I'm not stealing it. Uh, some of the stats are very funny. The, the Jets and Jaguars played. Actually, the Jets won. Even though Zach Wilson, he had a 90, 91 yards rushing. Memes probably remembers that. Titans beat the Bucks with Mariota and Winston. 40, Titans beat him 42-14. And then one of the funniest stat lines, the Colts beat the Chargers in 98, 17-12. Both quarterbacks were exactly 12 for 23 in that game. Peyton Manning and Ryan Leaf. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I don't know. That doesn't mean anything for here. It's just kind of cool. Yeah. Number one, number two. We're going to watch this game, though, and then immediately we're going to be like, one guy's a bust. Yeah, so according to this, Trevor Lawrence was a bust, mm -hmm. Jameis Winston was a bust, mm -hmm. and Ryan Leaf was a bust. And the 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 right pick was Zach Wilson, Marcus Mariota, yeah. and Peyton Manning. Great players. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Nerd Nugget. Panthers wide receiver Adam Thielen has 49 receptions this season, which is 33 more than any other of his teammates. He also has 59 targets, 30 more than any other teammate. Okay. So he's just getting still every good. catch on that team. He's still good. Like the Panthers are talking about going out there and getting another wide receiver. He's one of the best. Wide receiver at home. Yeah. yeah. You got one at home. Uh, okay. Before we get to the late slate, we're going to take a quick break for a very special ad. Make sure you're watching the YouTube because this is Pepperoni brought to you by PFT and Blake. Yeah, that's right. I got Blake right here. Blake is uh, Blake is ice cold against the spread. He's one four and one. He took the Bucks tonight plus nine and a half. So we'll know if he is on a little hot streak or if he's still the worst gambler in football. But he's brought to you by Pepperoni. I got some Pepperoni, and Blake's gonna Blake. Give me a wave. Good boy. Good wave. Tune into the YouTube to watch Blake do all his tricks. Come here, Blake. Come here, buddy. Or you can go to pepperoni.com and find some more uh, information about these great treats for your dog. Blake loves it. Blake's doing great. He's a football dog. He's here in the studio. Everyone loves him, and he's growing up nice, big, and strong. He's about 60 pounds right now, thanks to pepperoni and all the treats and all the good food that he's having. We love Blake very much, and I love football. Do you love football, Blake? Do you love wave if you love football. Give me a big wave. Blake, give me a big wave. Big wave. Big wave. That's a good big wave. Good boy. All right, come here. Show your, show your good face to the camera. Come here. Come here, big guy. There you go. There you go. There's a good boy. He's huge. And there's Blake. He's a big boy. Yeah, thank you, Blake. Give me, give me a kiss. Thank you. Good kiss. Pepperoni. Okay, we are back. That uh, ad was brought to you by Blake and PFT. Blake is here, and Hank went to uh, check on Blake, and memes said, what's Hank going to do? Give him a bad attitude? Takes one to no one, Connor. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Did you give my dog a bad attitude? It was no. a good line. It was a really good line. Yeah, I don't understand. I don't understand memes beef with me. I like it, though. I like the beef. For the record, when I brought Blake into the studio, Max was on the floor. Blake went right up to Max's cheek, started sniffing him. Max ignored him oh, for I about 10 seconds until I was like, Max, are you going to say hi to my dog? And then finally you turn around, you're like, oh, hey, oh, it's a dog, good. Oh, oh that because he walked out of the studio and he goes, if I see that dog again, I'm going to open hand slap that fucking it's bitch. It's a lie. I said, lie. I said, Max, that's not, it's not a girl dog. This is a lie. Okay. You did ignore, did you, or fact or fiction? You ignored the dog for, for the like, first 10 seconds. 10 seconds, fiction. <laughs> 10 seconds is fiction. It's we longer? Were, we were, it is, it was significantly shorter. We were in the middle of the conversation. And then I, and then I've been playing, I've been the one watching Blake this whole time. 
You've been in the studio. But but if I hear him crying, I've been the one going out and making sure he's all right. All right. Okay. Probably because you love to see dogs <laughs> cry. Back to the, <laughs> let me take a look at this wrong. dog in pain. Back, wrong. <laughs> back to the games. Bengals at Niners. Maybe game of the day. I would say this game is actually can't lose for both teams. Well, Sam Darnold's starting most likely is. I think that you can't really get out of concussion protocol that quickly, right? Tua did. Tua did. Well, he watched Gruber. Yeah. So, uh, we, need Gruber. To, we need to know, <laughs> Gruber. You know what, co- what mid-2000s comedies Brock Purdy's been watching. He did practice today, though. Oh, okay. So, he, so maybe he's out of the protocol. I'm, I'm hoping for a Sam Darnold game. I would like to see I that. am as well. I am as well. I... Bengals off a of bye. T. Higgins back. A little healthy. Joe Burrow got that pep in his step. Trent Williams, is he playing? Debo's yeah. not. Debo's out. And Debo makes a big difference. De- both those guys make a huge difference. Because um, Debo's, he's the guy that Brock Purdy looks to when they blitz, right? Right. And so, Trent Williams is a guy who blocks everyone when they blitz. Yeah. And I feel like if it's a blitz and you're looking at the hot route, having a guy that you trust that you've got good rapport with is pretty important in terms of timing as opposed to a guy that maybe you haven't worked with that much where you might throw a ball too quickly. These are good points. Page, it might get picked off at the end of a game, hypothetically. These are good points. I feel like Debo, yeah, they've got they've got Ayuk, who's a great receiver on the other side in his own right, but also is Debo the most important player on no, the offense? I think Trent Williams is. Trent Williams is. I think yeah, Trent Williams right. is for sure. I also Christian McCaffrey is playing through an oblique injury, and I don't think he's exactly the same. I'll say that. The two touchdowns covered up a lot of stuff for him. Yeah. He's – he's uh, last two games, 15 carries, 45 yards, 11 carries, 43 yards. Obviously, he catches the ball as well. But, yeah, I – maybe just – like, Christian McCaffrey at 85% is still one of the best running backs in the, in the world. But Christian McCaffrey at 85% without Debo Salmon, without Trent Williams – Things look different. This is going to sound horny, but it's not. Okay. Get the bonk list ready. If you have a hip injury or an oblique injury, going home to Olivia Munn every night, it must be tough to have that injury fully healed. Wait, he's dating Olivia Munn? Isn't he? No. Is it different Olivia? Culpo. Definitely. It's Culpo. Olivia Culpo. I was going to say. I Same definitely ma- I not Olivia Munn. That's what, that's what I meant. Yeah. Let me rephrase that. It applies to both, though. I don't know who's dating Olivia Munn. But if you have an oblique injury, going home to Olivia uh, Culpo. What's Harry's Tiles? No. Olivia Munn is married to. Uh, oh, the, they're um, comedians. Engaged. They're engaged. Yeah, they have a kid together. They're they're divorced. Sudeikis? Aren't they? No, fuck. Why can't I even think of his name right now? John Mulaney. John Mulaney. Oh, okay. Yes, thank you. Lives so, June twenty twenty one. Yeah, we kept probably on that. This guy has right been now. a fun. We we got it all. We connected it. Thanks for tuning in to Pop Culture. Who's married talk to Sudeikis? On PMT. Sudeikis and Olivia Munn broke up. No. 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 Olivia Rodrigo. Yes. Rodrigo Blankenship. <laughs> Olivia Rod- no, who did Snake is? Wild, right? Olivia There's Wild. Too, There's too, too many Olivia. Olivia. Too many Olivia's. This, is, this is fucking crazy. It's funny because like we we cannot keep track of the Olivias, but I know like 20 different Jalens. Yeah. And fuck. I know exactly who they are. How many Deshaun's do I know? A fuckload. Yeah. But fuck. All right. Can't can't Olivia's. figure out. But the point stands, which is when you're married to her, it must be tough to rehab from like Anything involving your core. To any of the Olivias. Any of the Olivias. Yeah. If you're married to a woman named Olivia. And Olivia, you're good. Yeah. Uh, okay, so yeah, I I kind of lean the Bengals here. I kind of lean the Bengals here. I don't know. I don't know. Who's Joe Burrow dating? We don't know, and we were going to respect his private life. Yeah, come on, Hank. That changes. That, that's, that's, it's, if it's, we're ta- up, it's up to Joe, whoever he wants. Olivia Holzmacher. What? Or Hol- I don't know how to pronounce it. Wait, that's what? actually who he's dating? Yeah, he's what dating the fuck? Olivia. Did you know that when you said it? Did you know it was an Olivia? Did you know that was Olivia? I swear. No, I thought I thought it was up. I swear. I, what God. the fuck is going? I, I feel like I feel like I, I feel that? like Vince Lombardi. What the hell is going on out here? I've never met an Olivia in real life, <laughs> and everyone's fucking Hank Stram. Him. Am I the only person that hasn't fucked an Olivia? I haven't. I have not. <laughs> okay, good. Me neither. Max oh, just raised his eyebrows. Hank's doing a little Jersey Jerry wink. Uh. That's that's nuts. Too many Olivias. Holy shit! They just do they just make Olivias hotter? I think maybe if you date an Olivia, you you reach the top. There's got to be field. a pick in here somewhere for you, big cat. I'm Anyone also thinking of Olivia, I have a couple I have a couple friends time. whose daughter's name's Olivia, and they listen to this show, and they're gonna text me and be like, "What the fuck, dude? Olivias are hot." Well, they're <laughs> they they marry quite well. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. All right. <laughs> Shout out Olivia's everywhere. Uh, Do we have any <laughs> listeners named Olivia? Oh, for sure. Reply, and they're the reply. hottest. Yeah. They are the hottest. You yeah. Are. Hit up the YouTube comments if your name's Olivia. Mm-hmm. Sup? <laughs> uh, Nerd Nugget. Uh, this was the best. This is the best analysis of a game ever. This is crazy. <laughs> that was nuts. That was nuts. <laughs> I feel like you knew that. I sw- I promise you, I did not. Okay. The 49ers are the only team in the NFL to have four different players with two or more interceptions this year: Talanoa, Hufunga, Diamador, Lenore, Charverius Ward, and Fred Warner. You just did that because you want to say the name. <laughs> what? You did that nerd nugget because you want to say the name. You crushed it. I practice it. Yeah, yeah, but you wanted to say the name. You wanted to flex. Say you again. flex. Say it again, James. You flex with the nerd nugget. The Amador Lenore. No. No, no shut no. up. What? The other the one. The other guy. Travarius Ward? No. What are you doing right now? The Amador Lenore. Talanoa Hufunga. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. That <laughs> what the hell? We- <laughs> yeah. And Fred Warner. He just flexed again. <laughs> yeah. Because he was like, like oh, Warner. you want me to do the hard name? And he and said he didn't two. do, yeah. Fred Warner's the Hufunga only one is the hard name. who are... Easy. Yeah, but Hufunga is the hard name. If you have a crazy name and you can play defense, you're on the 49ers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Browns and Seahawks. I'm high on the Seahawks. I am too. I think we've reached a good point in the does Deshaun Watson really love football discourse. And I think the mu- the waters have been muddied successfully enough to now that I'm at the point where I'm like, yeah, I don't think he really does no, love football. No, I also, I'm so high on the Seahawks. PFT, would you like to ride on a bet with me? Well, I, I do like the Seahawks this week. No, I know. Would you like to ride on a bet it with me? It depends on what the bet is. You have to say yes before, and then you have to bet it with me. Yeah. Seahawks plus 400 to win the NFC West. Mm. Mm. Both their games against the 49ers are ahead of them. You love betting against our friends. Uh, listen, we have some friends on the Seahawks, DK. Yeah, it's true. More like a friend of me. I don't think I'm not, it's not a bet against the 49ers can win. 49ers actually might be better at winning the Super Bowl as a wild card. I don't think. How about D- that take? I don't think DK can do it. Okay. I, I, I think. D- well, you already said yes, so you have to do it. Yeah, I will do it. But I just <laughs> also want to fire up DK a little bit. Um, DK, he's he's a hothead right now. He's been injured. I don't think this guy's got it together. It seems like all the pre-draft analysis was right on him. Where it's like, why is DK? You know, why is he falling so low? Well, because he can't turn. I think he has learned how to turn, but he forgot his bread and butter. Yeah, he's very tough at going straight now. Cancel the bet. Just looked at their schedule. Hadn't looked at their schedule. I already said yes though. Okay, we'll do a little bet. I'll sprinkle a little friendship. I'll sprinkle bet. a little bit. Uh, oh, can we do? I don't know if you could parlay the Seahawks to win the West and the 49ers to win the Super Bowl. Well, what you can do. <laughs> that would be a wild Here's one. what we should do. There's some bets because I was looking at exact order of division bets. Yeah. We can bet on the Seahawks to win the division. 49ers come in second. Rams come in third. Ooh. Cardinals come in fourth. Okay. I would ride on that because okay. you probably get some good value. Yeah. Um, yeah, they have a tough schedule. And I also, all my Seahawks love, as crazy as it sounds, is because I bet on the Bengals versus Seahawks and I had no business winning that game. And I walked away from it being like respect. Yeah. They're a tough team. <laughs> That's a That was a respect loss. The Seahawks, they're a tough out. Yeah. No, they're a good team. I Yeah, and the Browns, P.J. Walker on the road. Nah. Yeah. Nah. Um, P.J. Walker's a nice player. He's a nice player. Nice guy. He's a nice, nice guy. Player. Nice guy. Uh, Jake. The Seahawks defense currently has a three-game streak of keeping opponents under 250 yards of offense. Mm. The last time that occurred uh, was the last three games of the 2015 season. Legion mm. of Spoon? Was that Legion of Boom or right after? I don't know. But they this won is, it in 2013. This is Legion of Spoon, and I do believe in the Seahawks defense. I feel yeah. like I feel like they are um, – they're for real. So they're re- yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say really it. Good. Seahawks defense for real. Yeah. Kyle called them uh, when we were just we were driving over here. He called them the in the middle period the Legion of Whom. Oh, okay, I had never heard that. That was good. That's good when they're having a bad season. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Like in the yeah. it was Legion of Boom, Legion then it was of Legion Boom. of Whom. Now, now it's Legion of Spoon. Boom. Okay, yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Uh, okay, next up, Ravens Cardinals. Cardinals stink. Yeah, they stink, but they hit in the first half again. They last did. Week. They it, did. It, this is the this is the playbook for the Cardinals. You go out there, you might even win the first half. You compete, you have a good game plan going into Must it. Must compete. Then you compete, and then at halftime, their coach is like, okay, remember, we're tanking right now. Yeah. So we're going to make zero adjustments or maybe make a bunch of wrong adjustments at halftime. Mm-hmm. Then we're going to get our teeth kicked in in the second half, and everybody's going to be happy afterwards because this is the game plan. This is what we're going to do. I want to keep that formula going because I've – I'm a very bad gambler, but when I find something that works, I stick with those so they keep me afloat to support all my other terrible bets. Yeah. So I've been making money on this one, but now the Cardinals are missing Zach Ertz, Mm -hmm. big part of their offense, Mm -hmm. and they're missing James Conner, who's actually been good this year. Yeah. So this is going to be the the make-or-break moment for me. 
I'm going to do it again this week. And if they burn me, then I'm off the Cardinals. But um, they're going to get their shit kicked in in the second half, at least. Against yes, the yes, yes, yes. Uh, nerd Nugget. The, Ra- the Ravens' seven overall touchdowns allowed this season ties their 2000 Super Bowl team for fewest permitted by Baltimore through the first seven games of a season in franchise history. That's pretty impressive. The Ravens are good. Yeah. They're very good. Yeah. Like seven I, touchdowns I, in seven weeks. If the Ravens, if the Todd Munkin offense, if that was the, the game against the Lions, the launching pad for that offense, like we could look back and be like, oh shit, the Ravens are really good. Um, they also just love this is another uh, Lamar playing the NFC. Yeah, that's true. A good point. Yep. So sixteen and one. They just love playing anyone but the AFC North. Yeah. I feel like whenever the Ravens play the AFC North, it's trouble. Whenever they can get out of the division, they can beat people. Is Kyler Murray playing this week? No. Are we sure? Not sure. Uh, I think he participated in practice fully. Oh, so maybe. Means, but because Josh Job needs him to play. play. The Cardinals have all the short kings. Mm-hmm. Hollywood Brown, He's off the injury Rondell Moore. Moore is so fun to watch. Explosives. Pew, pew. He's back soon. Kyler Murray. He's back soon. Um, okay. Last uh, afternoon game, Chiefs at Broncos. I thought we were going to get our first snow game of the year. It's going to snow in Denver on Saturday. So is it going to be cold on Sunday? I don't know. They'll get it off the field. Doesn't yeah, matter. they'll get it off the field. So it, I was excited because I was like, ooh, first snow game. Pretty early, but it would have been cool. Uh did you know, and this is a fucked up stat because uh, the Chiefs are really, really good and probably the best team in the NFL. Did you know that the Chiefs lead the league in uh, passes dropped? I did not know that. Such bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> the 18. That's, That's such bullshit. It is bullshit. Well, half those are Kadarius Tony. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just – that's bullshit. Also, here's a stat, little woe stat for everyone out there. Uh Patrick Mahomes, in his career, has lost 17 games in the regular season. Russell Wilson, in his Broncos career, has lost 16. Mm. So if Russell Wilson loses this game, he will have the same amount of losses in his one and a half years with the Broncos as Patrick Mm. Mahomes has his entire career. So everything about this game tells you take the Chiefs, including that stat right there. Yeah. And they've been historically dominant over the Broncos, who have just had a sad, sad recent history against the Chiefs. But I was thinking to myself, because I'm looking for an excuse to not bet on the Chiefs in this game. Um, Do you think Broncos players are going to play harder knowing that they're playing for the right to possibly not be on the Broncos anymore? Mm. Like you Get out of jail? You could get traded? Yeah. Play your way out of jail. Yeah. It's a possible... Just something that I thought about. I do... Probably very dumb... In, in using that analysis to try to bet on the Broncos this week. Yeah. But it's something that crossed my mind, and I'm not totally convinced that it's wrong. Yeah, just work it out. You got a couple, you got 48 hours to work it out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, last game, Bears, Chargers. Oh, Nerd Nugget, sorry. This one's actually crazy. I do this once a week where it's my favorite one of You're the week. You're calling your shot? Yeah, last week it worked. Yeah, all right, I'll, I'm unbiased. Okay. This is from Curtis Siebel on Twitter. Since the beginning of 2017, the Chiefs have – either led or have been tied for the lead in the AFC West in 102 of 111 regular season weeks. They've led the AFC West for nearly six consecutive years. Well, they've won the AFC West for seven right. consecutive but years. Week one through week 17 slash 18, 102 out of 111. I'm going to say B minus crazy. I'm sorry. Cause the chiefs like, but leading like, even the Chiefs are thirty and three, or Patrick During Mahomes the is twenty nine and three. I feel like they lost a game between weeks one and four where they didn't lead every week. Where they lost. Well, the this Chiefs week. haven't led. Every yeah, week. the Chiefs haven't led it every well, week. Well, one hundred and two out of one hundred and eleven. If you had said a hundred, if you had said one hundred and ten out of one hundred and eleven, I would have been like crazy. Well, okay. I'm being unbiased. I mean, that's fair. I, it's that's a fair. good stat. I feel like the Patriots had a longer run. The Patriots had 11 years in a row, so the Chiefs are uh, tied for the second most with seven years in a row winning the division. So of those nine weeks, eight of them came in 2021. So most of them, they have... That, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, you're working towards yeah, something. Yeah. So yeah. That's how you got to frame the stat now. Is like, besides this one besides year week, that completely disproves my point. Week two through week nine of 2021, and yeah. then week one of this year when they lost to the Lions. Yeah. They've led the AFC West since 2017 every week. That, They're that really is, good. That's I think that's fairly impressive. I'll go up yeah. to a B. Fine. I'm gonna give you a B. Can, uh, that's good. Yeah. The, the, yeah. I convinced myself. Like I would sell. Yeah. A, now that I think about, it, I would sell a kidney to even have like the weeks that 
they didn't lead the division to have the commanders in the last seven years. Like, yeah. just how many years they've led the division. It's crazy. That's – yeah, eight weeks. Yeah, eight weeks. Oh, my God, eight <laughs> weeks sounds awesome. Uh, all right, Bears, Chargers, um, Tyson Bajant. Let's see what you got. Yeah, the only note I had for Bears, Chargers, I, I literally just wrote why, question mark. Mm -hmm. Why? I think it's just they they didn't want to burn one of their flexes. Chicago's obviously a big market, and uh, yeah. Why? That's it. Why are you doing this? The So I, I am going to take the Bears against the spread because they, like, Brandon Staley just lives to fuck up games and make them a three-point win or three-point loss. That's what he loves to do. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think that's fair to say. Like, they always Find a they, way. they seem to be playing. It's like going back to Phillip Rivers. Yeah. Justin Herbert with the ball in his hands, driving down a score, fourth quarter. Right, exactly. It has to happen. Exactly. Uh, Nerd Nugget. Chargers running back Austin Eckler needs one touchdown to reach 30 for his career. That would set the record for most receiving touchdowns in the Super Bowl era by a running back with a single team. They would break a tie with Brian Westbrook, who has 29 with the Eagles. Okay. Mm. I would good put the stat. Chargers up there with the Titans in terms of good running backs on a team for a long time. Yeah. They've got a good history. Yeah. Danian is carries a lot. Yeah. He's yeah. Lorenzo Neal. Natron means. Natron means Natron business. Means business. Uh, Michael Turner, Darren Sproles. Yeah. Oh, they had some good ones. Melvin yeah. Gordon. Melvin, Melvin Gordon. Gordon. Uh all right. Ryan Matthews. Mm. Ryan Matthews. Uh picks and standings. I feel like I'm taking on water. Standings uh, for the warm-up opening act of our show in Las Vegas. I am nine four and one. Max is eight and six. Memes is six and eight. Aww. <laughs> oh no, memes. And for the main event between you guys, Big Cat seven five and two. PFT eight and six. So I guess you guys are technically tied. Uh, yeah, well, I, Hank, I'm not sure math. Who wins that? Yeah, we're tied. Yeah, we both we'll have eight points. Yeah. Uh, Hank six seven and one. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an electric show. Got gotcha. your ass. All right, um, who's up Big first? Cat, you're up first. I'm up first. Fuck. Yes. Can I pass? No. Mm -mm. I can't pass. Nope. Being up first. Nope. Fuck. I don't want to be up first. I'll go with. Um, Talk a lot about the Packers. I'll do a stupid one. Saints, Colts over 43 and a half. All right. Who's up next? That would be memes. memes. I'm stalling. Uh, <laughs> should, we just, should we just start a new cycle now that we have memes? Yeah, let's start a new cycle. PFT, right, you go, go first. first. No, because we'll these are our seats Max. now. These are our yeah, seats now. Yeah, we're going from the old studio, and it's yeah, all... Yeah. It's all jumbled. So you go PFT. We'll go we'll around. Go and then we'll, next week this, you'll go. This feels like we're switching up methods in midstream. No, here. this is fine. You want to go Hank second? I just think it's easier for us. To I agree it. with Jake. Okay. We're going right. to be in this circle the exactly this way. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Steelers. 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 It's a towel game. Steelers plus, plus two and a plus half. Plus two and a half. Okay. Jake. I'm going to go with. Rams plus six against the Cowboys. Okay. Sean McVay, baby game. Okay. Max. But Jake, did you listen to what we said about that? Yeah, I know. You baby can't score a touchdown. Think, yeah. You McVay think can't score. More time yeah. away from his Max. Cup, but. Big Cat, what did you say? I said the over in the Saints Colts. I'll say Packers plus one and a half. Great. Against Smart the Smart move. You're an idiot. I, I laid You're that trap idiot. perfectly. I don't think that the Packers are so bad. They're never going to win that game. You fell for the trap, idiot. Shut up. <laughs> you shut up. <laughs> it's actually my mortal lock on advisor, so I really do like him. Uh, all right, memes. Jaguars minus two and a half. Oh, mm, head to right. head with PFT. Hank, double. Bears, plus eight and a half. Tyson Bajant, money line. Love it. Love it. Uh, and then I'm going to go in honor of Olivia. Bengals 49ers over 43 and a half. Okay. okay. Memes. Vikings, Packers, over 42. Okay. Remember when Olivia Soprano died? Do you know the Vikings Olivia's are actually like AI? It's like six and one to the under, I think, this year. I did not know. It makes that. no sense. They they miss it by like a couple points. Yeah, by a half a point every time. That's crazy. All right, Max. I will go Falcons, Titans, under. Oh, I like that, Max. I like what you did there. We've got 35 and a half. Ooh. Ooh. Army Navy. Wow. Okay. Go ahead, Jake. I'm going to go. 
with Eagles Commanders over 43 and a half. Mm. It wasn't it like 34, 31 in yeah. overtime the other time. It's exactly yeah. how it'll go again. Fine. <laughs> you little small. Part two. <laughs> All right. PFT. I'm going to take the uh, the Ravens Cardinals over 44 and a half. Mm. Mm. Did someone take the Seahawks? No. I'll take the Seahawks minus three and a half. And those are our picks. We'll post them out on Sunday. And let's do some fantasy fuck boys. Bum, 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 bum. What's up, fuckers? What's up, fuckers? What's up? It's Dedalus Diggle. My stardom is Chris Dapp's Porzingis. Boo. Unbelievable debut for the Seas. The spacing on the floor was incredible. 30 points. Game winning three. Clutch gene defense. If he stays healthy, this team's winning number 18. Oh, okay. My sit him. Bellatrix Lestrange. Of course. Oh, yeah. what? She's a murderous whore. What'd she do? Took out Sirius. Took out the long bottoms. Someone's got to stop this bitch. Right. I was, I've was. i been saying that for years. And my yeah. sleeper. I know, I know exactly who yep. that is. That's a good point. Is driving into poles. Oh, shit. You fall asleep at the wheel. Or you're just blind as a bat. You just drive straight into a parking lot and into a pole. Well, you can suck my dick. It happens to a lot of guys. The suck video's his dick unbelievable. From the back. We're going to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, suck my dick from the back. Uh, I'm starting. Hey, hey, what's up, you cock? You, uh, Yo, idiots. Yo, cocksuckers. You cocksuckers. This is Buzz Flabiano. What's uh, up, Buzz? Great. Yeah, there we go. They call me the B Man. I'm Put starting. Infinity. I'm starting Sam Halloween. Spooky, spooky. Making scary throws to Scary Terry this weekend. Love Sam How I'm sitting giant poles in parking lots <laughs> because some people pull it up on a fucking Google Maps and they say, oh, look at this day glow yellow that was wrapped around this pole telling you don't hit me. And then all of a sudden, somebody took the day glow yellow off and it's now a very hazardous pole that many people will be driving into. God forbid. God forbid. I, my sleeper is carbon monoxide because you should change your carbon monoxide batteries when you set your clocks back, which, as we yes. know, this weekend. Good call. What's up, fuckers? It's Santino Fantino. ASF. My stardom this week is Ginger Barry fuck. Sanders. And a special fuck you to LinkedIn because Barry Sanders couldn't get into his LinkedIn and he asked everyone to help him out. What what fucking job is Barry Sanders looking for? I don't know, but now I can't look up his resume. I <laughs> have no idea what he did. He said LinkedIn has suspended my account as they don't believe it's me. It's, it is him. It's Barry. My cinema is the Chicago Bulls. One game in, they got a players-only meeting. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's sick. They're, oh, Bills had a players-only meeting, too. Early yeah. This week. Pretty good. They told Billy Donovan, take a hike. <laughs> and then my sleeper is Connor Stallions with the Michigan Manifesto. I want to read that manifesto. It's going to be great. 550 great. pages. That's a big-ass book. Anytime that's a huge you write book. A, if you write a manifesto about something, you fucked up. You fucked up. Uh, real quick, with the manifesto. Yeah. This is new news today. The FBI has actually joined the investigation to Michigan football. Well, that's well, there. How were, many already, how many FBI agents went to Ohio State? Well, there already Good was question, an inve man. That's a separate. Yeah, but this is a new inve The FBI now. Yeah. Is investigating because there was an a uh, uh, staffer. I think Matt Weiss was his name. Yeah. He got all of his computers taken over the summer. Yeah. Michigan. So What's yeah. the difference between a manifesto and a mission statement? Uh, the manifesto is if you're going to murder somebody. Yeah. Typically. I'm the more of a protocol a written guy. written statement of a person's or group's beliefs, aims, and policies, yeah, especially not good. their political beliefs. Yeah, if you write a manifesto, you should be it's, arrested. It's bad. It's very uh, bad. Go stick with protocols. Uh, there's a uh, conspiracy theory that I am 100% on board with now about Connor Stallions. Yeah. So Big T brought this to my attention yesterday. I've been digging into it a little bit. Okay. Um, there were some allegations that Michigan had also helped out future opponents of potential future playoff teams yep. to get ahead of it so that Michigan would, in theory, have an easier time in the college football playoff. You go back and you look at South Carolina, who I think they scored zero points on offense yeah. the week they before they played Tennessee, and then they dropped 60 points on yeah. Tennessee. Yeah. And then the week after that, they go on the road against another top five team, Clemson, and they beat Clemson, mm. and they were a shitty team until those two weeks. And the game against Tennessee, that's the first time that, ten that South Carolina had been wearing wristbands on defense. Ooh. The first time they've ever done that. Um, so Wait, the Clemson thing doesn't make sense, though, because Clemson sucked last year. 
No, Clemson, I think at the time. No, they weren't in the college football playoff. Are you uh oh I'm pretty sure. Okay. Well, but I like let, the other part. Well, let's look it up. Yeah, no, we just gotta clean it up because I think so I, I, asked, I think the Clemson part might be Big T should let go of the Clemson part. Okay, I asked Big T also to bring me a connection. What is the connection between Michigan and South Carolina? Because if if there's a connection, then I'll continue pulling on this string. Um the defensive coordinator at South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Played defensive back at Stanford from 2007 to 2009 Ooh. when Harbaugh was their head coach. Ooh, interesting. It is interesting to think about. It's a lot of interesting things. Clemson had lost the previous week to Notre Dame. They got smoked. Okay. Um, in November of 2022. But so I two two weeks before, so three I, weeks before. So I guess the theory on this. So Clemson didn't stink at the time, right? They, they, had, get, they had taken a very they bad took, one they took loss. A bad one loss. So the theory is that Harbaugh was looking ahead, protecting himself in case he lost to Ohio State. Got it. To be like, we don't want to be the only. Yeah. We don't want to go up against another one loss team. Got it. And compete to see who's going to get I into the playoff. It. At I that don't time. hate it. I don't I, hate it. I love this story so much. Yeah. And there, there's it's two. The best. There's two very funny possible outcomes to it. One. Michigan wins the national championship, mm-hmm. which would be hilarious. And then gets a lifetime ban. And then <laughs> lifetime ban. Uh, two, Michigan, if, if like all this shit is real, then the Big Ten, probably not the NCAA, the Big Ten might say you're not playing in our championship game this year. Ooh. And Michigan would, I don't know, they might not be bowl eligible if there's mm. enough if there's enough shit going on behind the scenes. The only problem is the NCAA works so slow. They do. Jim Harbaugh is still open in investigation for the COVID violations. That's true. They so. they drag their feet so hard. <laughs> yeah. I have had some very high level conversations with the highest of levels at Barstool Sports about a potential national championship game if Michigan is bowl ineligible mm-hmm. between Michigan and James Madison. And James Madison like if James Madison is like also undefeated, I like that. We've the we're com- not thinking about James Madison. The conversations undefeated. have started. Yes, I like that. High level. High level. High Very, level. The business high, wise, the highest of level conversations. The highest of levels. I've had a couple sit downs with some big shot callers here. Um, they're talking about. Okay, it. I like it. Hank, what's up? Did you get to see PFT's video? I haven't yet. Have you seen it, PFT? I have seen the video. Yeah. Can I, I see it? it? Can we see it? Oh. What do you mean my video? Great. We can for, see for it. For the listeners out there. We can see it. So uh, the video of you crashing into a pole. So uh, how'd there, you see it? Uh, because I was the one that got the security footage yesterday, Max. No, you I, didn't. Yeah. I went into the, into the office and I was like, hey, let me see the surveillance footage. And the guy That's started playing it for me and, it yet. and downloading it. I was the one that got it. You came in late. I have not seen it. I would I like to it. see it. Also, everyone subscribe to the YouTube because we now have the capabilities of playing videos for ourselves in studio. Watch this poll come so out. So we of might start doing this like a Jamie, please pull up PFT crashing into a poll. Okay, so there's the poll. Where's the, the there's you said there's another car. Actually, right? I can't even see the poll. Oh no, you're this is not I can't even see the poll because it's yellow. I'm a good driver thing. Uh so what we're not seeing right now is the giant eighteen wheeler that was coming at me from the left. You guys didn't even get all the angles. <laughs> He said he was going to send you all the angles. It was like Austin Powers going back and forth. <laughs> oh, no, no, PFT. This so, is a bad look. Okay, there's, there's, there we go. There's my car. And then crunch, oh. crunch right into it. Oh, no. And then I backed PFT. off. And I'm trying and to the figure sensors, to... you know the sensors are going crazy right now. The, every sensor was going nuts. <laughs> and you just were like, nah, I'm fine. And I'm trying to get oh, out. Oh, and you're scraping it more? I can't even see that pull. Oh, my God. Oh, this is, this is not helping the I'm a good driver. It Wait, you do it. That's that's it though, right? You didn't even play it from the start. All right. Then I get out of there. There's no eighteen wheeler. You no cars. It's all see that car on the left, on the far left. Yeah, that's, like a hundred feet away. No, that's a FedEx eighteen wheeler that made me turn out of there because I had to. Which is a pretty routine turn that you're making. The FedEx here. is on the street. By yeah, the time and this you're, is also a the FedEx reg- is right here. This is a very regular turn. I'm a perfect driver. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, Jake's not allowed to laugh. <laughs> you hear that, Jake? I'm not laughing. You're not allowed to laugh. Yeah, but if you thought about laughing, then cut it out. Yeah. I'm not laughing. Okay. You rooted for Jim Beheim. I, I just want to know. <laughs> where, I, <laughs> you rooted for Dan Snyder's team for a very long I, time. Say what you want about Dan Snyder, but I don't think mm, he. Yeah, you're wrong, Jake. He, he has a driver. Also, Jake's a big Tony Elliott guy. Je- uh, no, you're thinking Tony, of Tony Stewart. 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 Tony Stewart. Stewart. Yeah, big Tony Stewart guy. Yep. Play the heads. 
Well, I, I need I mean, to know what. Wh- don't call it hits, the- dude. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? No, 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 no. It's not a game. Jesus Christ. Now Jake's laughing. No, I'm don't, laughing about you're not laughing about how stupid I am. <laughs> that backfired. I, okay. made, I made a bad turn, um, but that pole came out of nowhere. And the fact remains that the pole used to be clearly marked as a safety hazard with yellow. And then Hank yeah. designs a parking lot, and all of a sudden, the safety yellow is completely gone. You did this, Hank. You did this. I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna get a giant, uh, like fat head of you there to okay. kind of commemorate nice. the moment yeah. and remind people not to drive into this pole. So, like two days ago, I was just looking at how awesome my car was before I ran into this pole, and then now it's just like I'm so disappointed in myself. It's a sick car, though. I There's got to the be a guy. Someone, someone hit us up. Auto Body Shop. Give us a nice deal. No free ads. No free ads. All right, let's get to Kyle Long. A great interview. First guest in the new PMT studio. Okay, we now welcome on a very special guest, long term, long time friend of the show, recurring guest, in person, first ever in person guest in the new part of my take studios. It is Kyle Long, uh, our guy, three time Pro Bowler, no big deal. You can see him on CBS on Sundays. You can see him on the Green Light podcast. You can also see him on the Barstool Pro Football Football show uh on friday nights and sunday mornings re-air uh kyle what's going on boys welcome it's great to see you awesome studio awesome building here i'm so happy i was just saying before we started i'm secondhand proud of you guys like your family and you are family yes we've, we've been uh nurturing this relationship for a while so it's great to see y'all in studio i appreciate yes. that does that mean howie's our dad too yeah, Howie's, you know, somewhere in there, you know, you might get some kick down, some uh, some kickbacks from the old flat top. I just want to, I, I want the ability to visit the Montana house for like one week a year. Mm. You got it. And there's nobody willing to invite more people to our summer home than my dad. He's so proud of it. Like you guys are of the studio. Dad's like, have you been to Montana? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, I, you guys talk to him. He yeah. Loves it. Yeah. He loves no, it. we talked to him. He was, it was a great interview. I want to go to Montana and I want PFT and I to go out on a boat and, and pretend that we're in trouble. So he has to rescue us. To get those numbers up. Yeah, well, the thing is, if he does rescue you in the middle of the lake, Dad always brings the biodegradable soap, just in case in the emergency of you're really dirty. He's like, did you know you can, you can bathe out here? It's, it's a big bath. Catch this soap. I love that. That's such a dad thing, because he's going out there to save you, but also he's bringing a dad fact with him. He's like, did you know that this lake is so clean that it could actually be bath water? Mm-hmm. Yes, this Mr. Keel's, Dr. Keel's soap <laughs> yes. will actually benefit the fish population. He, he was great. He was great on the show. And um, I didn't realize it before we interviewed him that he was in That Thing You Do. Yeah. So did you? when did you find out that your dad played a gay guy so in That Thing You Do? That's a great question. And great question. I, Thank I, you. I knew that he was... He had a part, a small part, something like in the director's cut, I believe it was the scene with Tom Hanks and my dad leaving a nice hotel, going to a a date night. And dad's waiting in the car for Tom Hanks, um, who's trying to get his band members uh, back to the hotel. They've been drunk all night. So he's like, I'm going on a date. But yeah, dad, Tom Hanks dating in a drop top Corvette, probably, uh, you know, 1960s Corvette. Yeah. It was a good look for my dad. Yeah. That actually, it is a big come up if your dad, in theory, in like movie land, Hollywood world, if he is good looking enough where he could conceivably play Tom Hanks' boyfriend. Yeah. He's a dual threat. Just like when you look at some of these quarterbacks, (laughs) they can throw it, they can stand in the pocket. Dad. (laughs) Yeah. He's got it. it. (laughs) Yes. At a high level. Yes. Um, All right. So I mentioned at the top, you, you, you analyze football for a living now, which- Actually, before we talk about the NFL right now and maybe some week eight picks, uh, how do you like analyzing football for a living? Is it is it I, a little weird sometimes? I thought it was going to be a lot easier than it is. Okay. Yeah, honestly, uh, you know, every Sunday, and luckily I just do pregame. I don't have to do postgame. And I'm with CBS Sports, and we tee up the NFL Today show with Phil Sims and, and Boomer and all those guys. But my job is give people – my opinions before the game, what's going to happen. And I don't have to answer them after the game. Right. That's great. I don't have to come back in at halftime and say, well, I was way fucking off on Detroit. Yep. This yep. Week. Um, which is great. And, you know, that's fun. I get to talk uh, from an O-lineman's perspective, which there's not many of um, in TV. You get a lot of skill players. You get a lot of quarterbacks, coaches. Cowboys. Get a, get a lot of journalists. Yeah. Um, but I think the offensive line community is one that isn't um, – isn't able to speak up on, on a national level uh, enough. And I, I love what Whitworth's done yeah. uh, with Amazon. He does a really good job. And they let him lead some segments, which is great. I think he's an ass kicker and a great guy. But as as far as I go, 
Yeah, I watch I watch what I watch, which is a line of scrimmage. And if you do something worth talking about outside of that, I'm probably going to talk about it. But it's it's hard. You know, it's hard. You have to come up with fresh things to say every week. Mm-hmm. I can't just say their D line's better. Yeah. You, tip. Yeah, yeah. You, you can, got a lot of tips. You can you can just call people frauds. Mm-hmm. I can call people That's frauds, good. which I've done. Uh, yeah. I called Daniel Jones Daniel Loans a couple of years ago, oh. uh, and that was my first like step over the line. <laughs> oh. I was like Daniel Loans, and people were like, "That wasn't that good." Bro. Yeah. <laughs> you can also just make stuff up. You can make stuff up, and which, which I have. Yeah. If you're wrong, you'd be like, "That was a bit." Yep. Mm-hmm. That's that's essentially the entirety of this show. You have to check the injury reports too, because like you and I and PFT, we know the teams, we know the rosters. No, but, I I, I oftentimes like to let it surprise me. When you're asked about <laughs> the these, day of. it's like somebody was like, "What's going to happen in this game?" I'm like, "Well, so and so is going to have a great game." And they're like, "So and so's on IR." Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, "Who was going to tell me that before this show?" I, I like mm-hmm. to get to the games on Sunday and be like. Wait, I haven't seen this guy. And someone's like, oh, well, he broke his leg last week. I'm like, oh, that's cool. You know yeah. what else you, you get to do is like if a player, let's say Brock Purdy on Monday Night Football, Brock Purdy doesn't play well. Then you go out and you absolutely like crucify the guy. Then I say like, this guy sucks now. And then they announce, well, he actually had a concussion in the second half. Then you say, that's bullshit. They're making excuses for him. Mm-hmm. And then you, get to excuses. Just, you get to say that injuries aren't real, too, which is a real fun part of the job. Oh, man. And that's one thing that's tough about being in the media is they say, like, if you're calling a game or something and you guys have called live events, they say if there's an injury, you're just supposed to say the guy's down. You're not mm-hmm. supposed to take yeah. guess. We're not doctors. We're not any of that stuff. And that's a point of emphasis before the season when you have your seminar, your webinar or whatever. They're like, guys, you're not doctors. Like when Romo speculated, he's like, I don't want to speculate here, but that looks like a sprained ankle for yeah. Dak Prescott when, <laughs> when his foot was turned back. That was yeah. we, we did a rough and rowdy once when a guy had a seizure after getting knocked out. And I did the right thing of not talking about it, but I didn't realize the whole time they had the camera on us. And I was just like this. <laughs> I had my hands over my head. And everyone's like, did the guy die? Like all we see is Dan just looking like he died. So, yeah, I I, I got to learn on that. I asked Jim Nance, uh, you know, for any advice. You know, you ask, you get an opportunity to have a phone call with a guy like Jim Nance. It was a conference call. It wasn't like I called Jim Nance. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, Jim, any advice? And he was like, you know, it's important to remember that it's a visual medium. Mm. And I was like, before he could even continue, I was like, fuck, he's yeah, right. You yeah. know, like sometimes silence is golden. Yes. And he paused for five seconds. And he was like, you don't have to fill up this space. He was like, people are watching the game. Yeah. They happen to be listening to us. That's yeah. good. That's good really advice. good. Well, I have some advice for CBS. If you want to take this to the suits upstairs. Great. Uh, CBS, <laughs> fantastic na- network. I love watching games on, on, on like, your TV I gonna station. Am I going to get invited to on Sunday? Um, on, on Fox, one thing that I think CBS could maybe learn from a little bit that Fox does is when a player gets injured, they play the Fox NFL Sunday music, but they do the somber version of it. Mm-hmm. And they go to commercial mm-hmm. break. They need a somber CBS song. Yeah, you need injury music to let people know, like, hey, we're playing the buffer music, but also we're not happy about it. We're not excited. Like, I think both me and Big Cat have said in the past that we want the Fox NFL injury music to be played at our funerals. As you, which, which, as you lower the casket. Yeah, it's like which answer. stadium has the most disrespectful PA announcer? Like if somebody goes <laughs> down, what are they going to play? Yeah. You know what I mean, it's always what another are they Another one play? bites the dust. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard it all. A guy that's been injured in every stadium in America, yeah. like I've heard all the songs. Uh, that's a nice That's a nice little <laughs> trophy in your in your closet. Yeah, just a, a guy who's been injured a, in every stadium Just in a stack of fucking Band-Aids, like, uh, you know, and some dirt to rub yeah. on it. I yeah. Guess. Like uh, worst injury of the year could be an end of the year NFL award. They give yeah. you like the golden crutch. Like, yeah. Hey, sorry. Well, Good they job. give you the Ed, they <laughs> give the Ed Block Courage Award, which I've won. I won it. Uh, I won it because I came back from a brutal injury. That's the award, essentially. Like somebody yeah. who showed toughness and the ability to get back on the horse, and then I got injured again, and they were like, "Yeah, he can't win the award again. Yeah, he can't <laughs> keep doing this." <laughs> they yeah. kept voting me in, yeah. and they were like, "No, no, no, it's got to be somebody else." Yeah, yeah. yeah he's getting injured on purpose. Just getting to injured win this sucks. Award. Yeah, I. I mean, let's actually go into that real quick because it is very fascinating when we hear guys talk about injuries because we think, oh, okay, you get an injury, like, oh, yeah, like, you know, you're still around the team, you're still part of the thing, but that's not how it works in the NFL. Is that the worst part about the injury, the fact that you are essentially a ghost in the facility? You took and, like, the word right out of my mouth. If people don't talk to you, people don't even, like, converse with you? Yeah, I mean, not only are you not playing and not helping, but – throughout the day your schedule's different you know what i mean you may go to meetings with the office let's say i get uh, an injury to my lower leg i can't play for six weeks for six weeks i'm going to be lifting by myself with the training staff i'm going to be in early 
with the training staff. I'm going to be in late with the training staff. I'm not going to be able to practice with my guys. They're going to eat lunch at a different time than I am. You become a ghost. You become a stranger to your own closest friends. And then when you get back in the building after you've rehabbed and done all the things that they said, if you do this, you'll be be able to come back. You get back, you don't feel like yourself on the field. Mm -hmm. And that's become your identity throughout the years. Then you say, yeah, this isn't me. I don't feel good. I don't feel good at all. And then you start to have the self-doubt. And then that injury becomes your career. Yeah. Did, did you ever have coaches that blamed you for getting injured? Yes. That's the worst, isn't it? Yes. Well, why'd you step there? Dude. Like, so this we, guy this guy's got pussy bones. Yeah. We went to Tampa Bay, uh, and we were playing in my fourth year, I believe, and we had a fullback by the name of Paul Asike, who was he had a voice like an angel, like a songbird, but he was a, a rugby guy. I think he was Kiwi. Um, I like this guy. We, He's checking all the boxes. We, re we ran the Andy Reid shovel pass in the low red area. Okay. I was on the deuce block. So it's a double team with me and the right – I guess I was playing guard, so it would have been the right tackle. We're double teaming a guy. Cutler flips the ball to Lasique behind the deuce. You know, they go with the shovel pass option. Um, and the ball was fumbled. It landed on my legs, ne near the back of my legs, while I'm driving into the end zone. And the pile falls on my legs specifically my right ankle, which just got exploded. Um, and I remember I went in after I got sur I got surgery like two days later. I went in to go meet with my coach, and he was like, you know, if you just use that fucking technique that I told you. Oh, what a dickhead. Oh. <laughs> no. And I remember looking yeah. at him like, you've got to be kidding. Yeah. yeah. In this moment here, that's what you chose to say. Yeah. Like the entire pile just fell on my leg. What the fuck do you want me to do? Yeah, I mean, so that does happen. Um, and, you know, was it my fault? Maybe. Was it not my fault? Maybe. Yeah. Like, football shit happens. There's bodies flying around everywhere. Me and Will Compton were talking about it today. I said, there's some days I look at this game and I say, I could still play. And then he said, and there's some days I look at the game and I'm like, how did I play this right. game? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. With all the bodies flying. That's yeah. crazy. So so uh, when it comes to, like, coming back from injury, you just said it like the self-doubt. How how do you deal with that where you're like, I know I should be moving this guy in front of me, but I can't. There's like a 10% of my my strength is not there or, or I'm missing something. And how do you – because like I would imagine that happens in literally every locker room in the NFL and teams that are going through that, like a bunch of guys who get injuries, you think, oh, they're back. But you don't realize that it actually they're not back until they they go overcome that self doubt. You know, there's levels to there's different categories of players in the NFL as it pertains to response to injury. Like you go watch Lane Johnson last week against Jalen Phillips. Lane Johnson's out there on one leg. Jalen Phillips is one of the premier rushers in the NFL. Lane Johnson's holding his own. Is he in pain? One hundred percent. There's no self doubt in there though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of these guys are just wired differently. Joe Burrow on a calf, look like shit the first few weeks, but he's like, guys, I'm okay. Right. Like, I'm Joe Burrow. Right. Patrick Mahomes, every week, seems as if he's limping. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. People are always around his feet, but he's got mental toughness. I, I was gifted physically. I could do things that other guys can't do. I can roll out of bed and, and go jump over something or run through something. But when you get injured, when I got injured, it was devastating mentally and from a confidence standpoint. And when you get back, before you even try to block somebody, you go through warm-ups, you go through high knees, you go through side shuffles. And if you feel like shit during high knees, I promise you, you'll feel even worse during football. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if this is your return, like I'm thinking about Kyler Murray, 21 practice day return window. Yeah. He probably feels good in Indy and all that stuff. When things crank up, when he has to avoid a rush, when he's got to put that leg in the ground a different way, it may not feel the same. Yeah. Some guys just don't listen to that voice. I was a guy that did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when it happened repeatedly, four years in a row, you start to say, hey, man, let's just. <laughs> yeah. Can let's, just great answer. Answer. let's just yeah. get out of here alive. Yeah. Can I tell you something, though? That, that makes you normal. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, right. like, what you're describing right now is not a deficiency that you have. I think that's what 99.9% .9 of people have based off uh, 500,000 years of evolution, basically. It's like, hey, if you're injured, then protect that injury. And if it feels bad, then that shouldn't be something you continue to do. So it's like it's a normal thing that you have, but some guys are just like, okay, they can tune that out, and they're absolute psychos. Like Tyreek Hill is another guy that I feel like he gets injured every week for like two plays. 
and he gets back in the game. Yeah, he puts his head down. He he does. He sulks a little bit, but he's walking at nine miles an hour. Yeah, and then he gets back to the huddle, and he's like, "Just throw it to me again." Yeah. Your your brother told me the funniest. Uh, <clears throat> like, he explained an injury in the NFL, and he said the worst part of getting injured in the NFL is that you get injured, and then you go into the locker room, and then you're sitting there in a ton of pain, and there's a dude who's like 140 pounds wearing khakis and a team issued polo with his hands on his hips being like, you really not going to get back out there. Mm -hmm. And you just want to be like, dude, shut the fuck up. No, like, well, they don't even ask you that question. Big cat. What they say is, so are we going to tape this or are we going to, what do you want to cast or uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they didn't even ask you. They're like, so you are going to play. How are we going to get it done? Right, mm -hmm. right, right. And just being frustrated with like, fuck, I need a second here. Uh, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, as an analyst, like, welcome to the big leagues. You're, you know, big time CBS now. Your words carry weight behind them. Um, I was actually looking at your rankings of America's teams that you put out. Now, this wasn't on CBS. This was with uh, Greenlight on, on Greenlight with your brother, Chris. Uh, it says right here that you have the Houston Astros as America's team. So I went second. So this thing is uh, the America's team has taken on a, a life of its own, right? Uh -huh. and every week we get to pick who we think, uh, you know, America is going to hang their hat on as their favorite team. And I thought, you know, with Michigan cheating, with Houston's uh, history of cheating, I saw the response to Michigan. It was a polarizing response, mm -hmm. I would say. And I like Altuve, and I like to ruffle feathers. And Chris uh -huh. is a Phillies fan, so I picked the Phillies and the Astros to play in the World Series, and then I picked the Astros to beat the Phillies. It mm -hmm. looks like we're all wrong. There. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you were I, right last year. But America's teams, they're fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say right now America's team, in, in terms of the NFL, if you had to say which team, uh, it's the Lions. The Lions are kind of there. You still got to go Chiefs, though, right? Chiefs. Yeah. Although Eagles. Eagles. Yeah. I would what? say Yeah, I would say I would say Chiefs. And now Chiefs more right so now. than ever the Niners because Brock Purdy's being doubted. Sam Darnold's playing this week, but or we think. Yes, right? so we yeah, think. I think he is, yeah. Brock Purdy's being doubted. Nobody roots for a team harder than a team with a guy that's being doubted. Yeah. And, yeah. and Brock Purdy's the guy. And uh yeah, I would say the Niners are on my America's team. The Vikings, they were they frisky be. as a motherfucker yeah. the other night. They might be. Uh, okay, I want to talk about some some teams right now. Uh, and we just mentioned the Chiefs. You were in Kansas City for, was it a year, two years? Year. Year. How the fuck is Andy Reid this good at coaching? I, I like we, We've been saying for the last few weeks the Chiefs have reached their final form of the Dynasty Patriots in that like they brought back Nicole Hardman. They're also winning with defense now, and Patrick Mahomes – isn't doing these shot plays like they're they've morphed into a different team and they just keep winning like they didn't miss a beat but if you look at these chiefs first chiefs five years ago they are playing completely different ball one thing that stands out to me about all successful coaches in this league is they all have that x factor whatever it is that they do they do it very well andy reed understands the offensive line position as well as anybody i've played around he also gives the keys to the car to andy heck who was the offensive line coach. And that's a name that doesn't get talked about enough for the Chiefs. But he's the run game coordinator as well. Andy Reid's in charge of screens. He talks to the linemen. He knows the linemen better than anybody. Better than, you know, better than anybody not named Andy Heck. Right. Which most head coaches don't do that. They're yes. not that involved with the well, offensive line. The offensive line is the biggest group in numbers on the football field. With the Chiefs, they're the most talented group on the football field. Tackle to tackle, the inside three, they're great. Andy Reid knows that that's the strength of the football team. But in addition to that, they have Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, they have Travis Kelsey. And to your point, Steve Spagnuolo's defense, 21 points or less in each of the first seven games. They look Patriots-ish. Yeah. Where they find new ways to win each year. It's crazy. And you say, how are they going to do it? They don't have a receiver. Well, they got a great defense. Right. Okay. Now their defense, you know, maybe their defense struggle. Well, watch Rasheed Rice go put up 140 in one of these games. Right. Nicole Hardman's back. That's great. Huge punt return. He's a guy that knows how to press the buttons on his team. He understands personalities. He lets you go. One thing he always said was, Monday through Saturday, those are my days. Sunday's your day. Oh, I like that. And I was like, huh, it makes sense. His guys have fun. Yeah. His guys have fun, and they win. Do you think sometimes he gets too cute with it, especially in the red zone? Oh. Or does he get bored? Especially when he's yeah. playing. It's, it's kind of the same thing. <laughs> when you're playing against the Broncos on a Thursday night game, and then you're running like my question crazy is this: Is that Andy Reid or is that Matt Nagy calling the plays in Denver? Well, because I feel like Andy did that before Matt Nagy was calling the plays. Do you think that this recent game was a Matt Nagy special? Uh which one are you talking about? 
the, the uh, three wasted opportunities in the red area. That probably a Matt Nagy special. Yeah, but uh, but I have seen a lot of Andy Reid doing that type of stuff, especially in the red zone where they're doing like a fake shovel pass, pass to a tight end. Look, pass. there's a create there's a creative threshold though mm-hmm. where it goes from creative to cute, and I think we can agree on that. Where it's like, oh wow, that was r- really creative. It I'll worked. Tell you, I'll tell you what the threshold is because I know exactly where that line is. If it works, it's creative. Mm-hmm. If it doesn't, it's hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. And we saw that with Nags in Green Bay. There was too many cute plays that didn't work. And then obviously they have the people and the in, the installation right in Kansas City, where they can say the person making the decision on this cute play is number fifteen, Patrick Mahomes. The ball's in good hands. I yeah. think it can actually not work and still be creative if it looked like it could have worked. Yeah, if, like it, if a guy's open and you just miss the pass, yeah. it's it's it doesn't. It's dumb and cute whenever you get like and the defense for a has loss. to cover it. Too. Yeah, when you get tackled for a mm. loss, it's instant. Like you got too cute. Also, if there's a pancake on the play, yeah, if somebody on the on the offensive line like steamrolls somebody, then it's not cute anymore. Even if it is like a double reverse pass back to Patrick. Mahomes. That was powerful. I That's love powerful. that group. Yeah. That offensive You're line's awesome. Yeah. They should they should get all the kudos that they can because everybody else gets talked about on that team, whether it's Chris Jones or Mahomes or Kelsey or Taylor Swift. I mean, mm-hmm. the reality of it is. You got to beat people up front, and Creed Humphrey, Trey Smith, Joe Tooney, and then Taylor and Smith. Their tackles—they've been great this year, and there was widely publicized all the penalties on Jawan Taylor at the right tackle spot. But they're figuring out what's legal yeah. in terms of alignment. Yeah. Okay, so I like where we're going with this because when we talk about offensive linemen on the show, we usually we we try to spread out a little bit, but like every other show, we'll talk about the left tackle or the right tackle. That's usually what we key on. Um, give us your top interior linemen on the offensive side of the ball in football? I think if we're going to go group, I'm going to go Kansas City. Okay. Group is Kansas City because you're only as strong as the guy next to you. Um, I I truly believe in that. And you mentioned tackles. That's great. One group of guards that I really like, or at least the guard-tackle combination, is in Chicago. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. I love it. They've got a guy named Tevin Jenkins who's an ass kicker. He is a a mood setter in the running game. If he can stay healthy, he's legit. Darnell Wright has been awesome, has been great for the Chicago Bears. Um, and you put a big tight end next to him, and now you have a three-man wall where you can just wash the backside of a run uh, run play. And I think that's really underappreciated. I'm glad you asked about the inside guys. Yeah, we need to we need to pay more respect to the guards. Bill Callahan's group, the OGs. Bill Callahan's group is great. He's a great coach. He is a great coach everywhere he's been. How'd you guys let him out of the building? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how we let him out. Like it feels like everywhere that Bill Callahan goes, the running game improves instantaneously wait so i have a question because bill callahan's a phenomenal coach and we were making this argument the other day that dante scarnecchia might actually be the goat not brady or belichick because every time he coached the patriots offensive line they were incredible how how are those two guys better than everyone else like what is it the technique or how they're teaching because you'd think a coach is a coach is a coach yeah obviously a head coach there's a lot involved but like all these coaches in the NFL, the offensive line coach, they clearly know what they're doing, but there's still a couple guys that are that much better than everyone else. Can I tell you the difference? Yeah. I, I'm very so, interested in this because I'm – Dante Scarnecchia feels I like a, a visit, wizard of Oz. I had a visit with all these coaches. Okay. Pre-draft. Scarnecchia, it was, it was like old school. It reminded me of like a scene from Rudy where they're in there watching film. You know what I mean? Like – Old old school football. I mean, they still run hills after practice. They hit a heavy bag after practice. People hate going to work in New England because they work so hard. Bill Callahan, I had my visit with him, and Frank Pollock, who is the O-line coach in Cincinnati, I believe now. They were in Dallas together with Zach Martin. This is right before Zach Martin got drafted. Um, they had Tyron Smith and a few other guys. But they, uh, Bill Callahan pulls up a play. He says, all right, we're running this protection. You know, it's third down. This is the linebacker we're responsible for. Who are you blocking? Uh, he essentially said, this guy comes down. Who are you blocking? And he clapped like a second later, and he said, you can't play for me. Oh, damn. Because you didn't answer right away? Right away. He said, quarterback's hit. You can't play for me. Oh, I love that. He left, and I did the rest of the meeting with Frank Pollock. Oh, damn. That's awesome. So to, to your question, I would say this. <laughs> he doesn't have any room for bullshit. Right. Yeah. If you play for Bill Callahan, just like if you play for Bill Belichick, you better know what you're doing. Right. Yeah. Big Cat, what's the promo code for Muggsy? Take. 
Yeah, no, he got it. Can't he, play for me. No, he <laughs> got it. He got it. He can play. I actually was offsides. Yeah, that was <laughs> I've good. said it before. Jawan that's, Taylor. That's such a. That's so funny. Like, all right, my my right hand guy's gonna handle this. You're an idiot. There's some coaches that work you to death. There's some coaches that expect you to have such a high football acumen. And I think Callahan's one of those guys. And I wish I got that question right. Oh mm -hmm. man, did you answer it like after he left the room? Like Costanza with the jerk. I think store. I still don't know how to block. <laughs> he was <laughs> right. I, I think I just said the three, the yeah. three technique. Yeah. We're going to get back to Kyle Long in a second, but he's being brought to you by Game Time. I love Game Time. Easiest way to get into a game, easiest way to buy tickets for anything. Any next, any big event that you have coming up, Game Time is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets. You can get into sports games, you can go to music shows, comedy shows, theater events. They've got everything going on. Game time is the one place to go for a great ticket buying experience, especially on last minute seats. If you're looking for deals, they've got you covered. If you're looking for an easy way to buy tickets to a game and transfer them to a friend, family member, game time is the easiest. It is seamless. Browse through the game time app and check it out for yourself. We've got some concerts coming to town. I'm going to go see a few concerts in December that I already bought tickets to through game time. We've got college football, NFL, We've got World Series games. Game Time has it all. They have last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. They've got easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. It's the only app that I will use to buy tickets because it's super easy and they show you your all in price up front so you know that you're getting a great deal without the hidden fees. They hooked it up. Game Time hooked it up for myself and memes at that Thursday night game in, uh, in Landover, Maryland. Commanders Bears. We had some of the best seats in the entire house, if not the best seats. I've never seen football like that. It was all thanks to Game Time. They've got the best seats going. Check it out. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account. Use promo code PMT. Get twenty bucks off your first purchase. Here's twenty dollars. Okay. Here's twenty dollars courtesy of part of my take in Game Time. Just download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code PMT and you get 20 bucks off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And now, here's more Kyle Long. All right, so another offensive line question related. Uh, Tyson Bajant is obviously starting for the Bears right now. Justin Fields injured. I feel bad for Justin Fields because it feels like no matter what, it's not going to work out. But uh, this guy on Twitter who I've mentioned before, Robert Schmitz, he was the one who, who posted the initial video of Justin Fields Taking a little bit slower in his dropbacks, Tyson Badgett is a lot quicker in his dropbacks. How important is that for an offensive line, even like a fraction of a second? Does that make you guys that much happier where it's like he's getting to his spot so quickly, we're going to be okay? It's not necessarily the getting to the spot quickly, which does matter. Yeah. I mean, you want to get to your spot quickly as a quarterback so that you can then what? Step up. Right. Or deliver the ball or get out of the pocket. And seeing Badgett be on time, we always hear – uh, people say on schedule. Mm -hmm. Tyson Bajan was on schedule. There was nothing that he saw that thwarted his focus away from the guys down the field. And, you know, one of my pet peeves is when people say he keeps his eyes downfield. It's like, where the fuck are you going to look? You know what I mean? Uh -huh. He not only keeps his eyes downfield, he can make the throws when he's going outside the numbers, when he's forced off of his spot. He gets to his spot so quickly that he can see the danger coming if somebody gets beat and get off his spot quickly. Yeah. If you are oozing back to your spot, then it becomes a race to get out of there. He has his feet planted early, and the important thing is the ball's out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The ball's out, dude. And I remember when Russell Wilson was playing in Seattle, and he was doing great, but he was running around like nobody's business. I would have hated to have played offensive line for Russell Wilson. Yeah. Then. I would have given up a ton of sacks. Right. If, you know, when I played for Cutler, I knew Cutler was going to stand in the pocket and throw the ball. It may have been to the other team. It may have been to our team. But at the end of the day, no sacks. Mm -hmm. We're right. all happy. Right. So if I'm if I'm an offensive lineman, I'm happy to see what Tyson Bajan's done for Chicago. And I know the receivers like him. And you can hear the guys on the sidelines saying, man, this kid's got moxie. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. something about it. He's got him. some swag. I, I'm sure that he will have, like, his, you know, f shoe dropping moment where it's like, oh, yeah, this is why he's Division Two and was undrafted. But – it is crazy to watch the side-by-side -side video of him, just how quickly he gets back and how the offensive line can just look that much better. I think we should – I wish we had ability – I wish we had brains to do advanced stats to be able to discern exactly when it is the quarterback's fault because you guys get screwed. Like Russell Wilson is a perfect example. He 
he he he would get sacked a lot, but a lot of them weren't his. Like a lot of them weren't his offensive line's fault. It was him running into sacks. I think after five seconds, it should be considered a tackle for loss. Okay, mm. I like Just that. Purely based on yeah, because there's no chance that you can block a guy from five seconds. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's like we watched Jalen Hurts or no, who was it? Lamar Jackson run around. Ten the other seconds day. he had. Ten seconds, and then these DBs are supposed to cover for ten seconds. That shouldn't be a completion against me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're right. <laughs> We need to start doing this. It's like an advanced analytics. Our opinions on yeah, it's it's advanced analytics. It's, and it's but it's slightly like, opinion. Based. It's just strictly the eye test that we give it, but we keep track of it. Yeah, and how many belong to the quarterback? How many belong to the O line? Yeah, it's like the Sam Howell conversation we yeah, had yeah. this morning. I yeah. mean, Sam Howell is on record to be, and everybody said this. Sam Howell's on record to break the sack record by a lot, by, by a, a wide by, by a shitload. Mm-hmm. But yeah. stick with me here, the Washington Commanders. They are top five in the NFL with time before pressure. Right. Which tells me that Sam Howell is just not fucking throwing the ball. If you look at his sack numbers, um, the time in pocket before he gets sacked is uh, it's astronomical. It's like one of the high – he spends more time in the pocket than any other quarterback in the NFL. All the other guys that are closely grouped in that position with him that spend like, I don't know, like three to six seconds before a sack occurs, um, they're some of the least sack quarterbacks in the NFL because they're moving around – they're keeping their eyes downfield. But Sam gets sacked a ton when he spends a long time in the pocket. So I, I kind of agree with you. It's not it's not just the O-line. And it's the defense, too. The defense Can is Can we not, talk about that? The defense yeah. is is not great. Actually, <coughs> the Commanders might be America's team. Now yeah. That I'm thinking about it. Literally. Yeah, they are. They are America's team. They used to be great a while ago, and everyone's lost faith in them. A guy named Harris. Uh, or the guy that runs the show is always asleep, Ron Rivera. Can we do something about Rivera? What is he doing? What is Rivera doing on the sidelines? Is he coaching? I think he's coaching. I think he's just, uh, you know, he's dealing with personalities probably. Like you see last week, Jonathan Allen's frustrated. I love that, though. I love it, too. And I love it, too. And I've been in Jonathan Allen's shoes, and I could totally have, uh, you know, I can empathize with what he's going through. But, you know, I look at this defense, and they are just, you know, they're forged from steel up front. They're a Mm -hmm. group that has way too much talent to be doing the things that they're doing, giving up the points that they're giving up. And I think a lot of it falls on Jack Del Rio. You can't just have four guys and expect those four guys to get home. Yeah. In this iteration of the NFL, you need to manufacture pressure. You need to dial up blitzes. You need to put the pressure on the offense. Yeah, when we were blitzing a couple weeks ago, it was it was working. We were, we were getting home. We were putting pressure on them. And there are some times when that front four will get pressure. Like Chase Young has been better this year. Than You're going to get home with them. Montez Sweat is a great player. Jonathan Allen, Payne. I think those guys are all very good players. I don't put the blame on them for this. I think that in the schemes that they're running, they're asking their rookie cornerback, Emmanuel Forbes, who's been benched now, um, to you know to stand out there and cover elite guys one on one, and he's too aggressive to do that if if pressure isn't getting home. If a guy's like trying to jump a route, but your defensive end isn't going to get to the quarterback for another second, that's going to result in giving up 150 yards to AJ Brown every single time. Yeah, it's just bad. It's bad on the defensive. Uh, okay, side. so off of this, um, dumb question, very dumb question, and no, you don't have to name names, but you've I obviously been in a lot of locker rooms when. A coach has lost the locker room. Is it something that like every player says to each other? Like, yeah, I think he's lost it. I think he's lost the locker room. Do you guys like send a message around? Yeah, I mean, where's the locker room? Yeah, hey, anyone what see the locker room? Hey, I just You're looking yeah. underneath the couch. Locker room's on a milk carton. <laughs> I, I just saw John Fox looking around, lifting up like lifting up rugs. I think he's trying to find the locker room. Guys. You know, there was. Uh... <sighs> Too many to remember. Too many locker rooms lost. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, yeah, you're like the. Are you a locker room thief? Or you, were you taking? Was you're it like the you Bermuda problem? Triangle of locker rooms. I, I was like the toilet that gets passed down through a shitty house that gets sold to another owner. Like, I'm just like, yeah, you can shit on me. I'll be here. <laughs> Cal, Cal's got seven locker rooms over the course of his career. Just sit down. Um, yeah, it's you always as a player feel like. You can win football games. I mean, regardless of how bad your team is, that's why they made a movie any given Sunday. It's real. I mean, that's real. But you can also feel like you have a coach that's going to put you in bad situations. Right, right. And, yeah, I mean, it's tough. Playing in the NFL is tough. You have to have so many things right, from quarterback to line play to defense to the staff. And we just didn't get it right in Chicago for a long time. We had some things right. Yeah, pieces. We had pieces, right? There were years where we had a great defense. There were years where we had an explosive offense, but we couldn't get complimentary. Yeah, all that. I love complimentary football. It's my favorite And thing. to your point, when you do get to that point in the season where you're like, we're fucked, yeah. uh, it's like, who are we going to get? Yeah, mm-hmm. right. You kind of right. get excited. Yeah. 
Right, like yeah. new faces. We don't want to be the number one pick, but who are we going to yeah, get? Yeah, who are we going to get? Do, do you get a little boost towards the end of the season if you know that the coach isn't coming back where it's like, okay, now it's time to play for my job. Yeah, now I mean, I've got to go out there and I have to perform individually. Like, is there? Can you feel that difference when guys start thinking about their own futures with the team as opposed to the team? Every day in the NFL is an opportunity to invest in your future. I remember when Akeem Hicks first showed up to Chicago. And I was like, I was doing the math, like Akeem Hicks. Okay, this guy's a monster. I played him when he was in New Orleans, and he was a load. I had to ice my neck for like three weeks. But he came to the building, and it became evident to me that practice wasn't going to be as easy for me. Mm -hmm. And I said, there's two ways I can go about this. I can challenge this motherfucker every day, and we can both get better. Or I can just be the guy that brother-in-law is in practice, and we're not going to get any better. And our team's definitely not going to get any better. Akeem and I made a decision to go at it every day. <laughs> Our lockers were right next to each other. We hated each other in practice. But when we got to the locker room, we shared a can of dip. We were buddies. Um, I think that's the decision that all these guys in all these locker rooms have to make. Like I think about Denver and all these great players that they're potentially going to ship out. Yeah. And that's what I said. This is going to be a showcase game for those yeah, guys. Yeah, against the Chiefs. Yeah. This is a free agency tryout. This is a trade tryout. You it's know a combine. What I mean? yeah. uh, that's what the end of the season is, but it just it weighs on you when it happens every year. Yeah. Year after year. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. How sweet is it when you sign a big contract, though? It's fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> when you're, si <laughs> when you're sitting there eating your oatmeal and they're like, it's done. Six year, $50 million. And the guy sitting next to you is like, hey, buddy, that's you, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> it makes all the shitty days mm -hmm. worth it. Did but you, but then you get your money and you're like, but we're still like we still can't win. Yeah. <laughs> but I still feel bad in yeah. the morning sometimes. Yeah. When you when you got the contract, did you cry? Um, I don't know if I don't know if I cried. I was just juiced. I was just juice. Yeah. I, uh, it was it was funny because it was after my third year, um, and the Bears don't re they don't extend people early, and I remember that's a good way to do business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jalen Johnson's <laughs> going through that right now. I yeah. Rem yeah, pay that guy. Yes, pay yes. Jalen Johnson. Lose the orange sleeves. Pay Jalen Johnson. Yes. But I remember I was in my – I had made three straight Pro Bowls. They had just moved me to tackle in my third year, and I was like, so the fuckery is beginning. Right. You know what I mean? And I had a five-year deal with a club option for a fifth year because I was a first-rounder. And I remember my dad said to me, he was like, things are going great. You're doing awesome. You're you're blocking your ass off, but you got to get your deal done now. He was like, it's not about the big number. It's about the guaranteed number. Get it done now. And I remember being like, they've never done a deal. And my agent at the time, Marvin Demoff, did a great job and made it happen. Um, and I remember we went to joint practice and practiced against the Patriots. And they had Jamie Collins, who at the time was the Akeem Hicks of linebackers. Yeah, he was right. like, he's an ass kicker. And I remember Joey, our cap guy, was on the sideline with Pace before practice, before the week of practice. I walked up to him, and this was right when we were opening contract talks. I walked up to Joey and I said, how much does he make? <laughs> and he told me, I said, fucking watch this. And the whole week I was like, just <laughs> trying to find Jamie Collins. Oh my yeah. God. And I got signed soon after that. That's awesome. And, uh, but the, the point of this is you sign early and then you get hurt, you're still taken care of. Right. Yeah. If you don't sign early, then I could be looking at three straight Pro Bowls and just living on a rookie deal the rest of my life. Yeah. Right. Um, right. So kudos to my dad who had the foresight to be like, no, no, no. Get it done. He's yeah. a smart guy. Do do guys ever like look sideways at a teammate that's holding out, that's making a big deal in the media about their contract, or is it usually just like, hey, we understand the business we're in, we'll support a guy. Yeah, it'd be great to have him out here practicing with us. I don't really remember anybody holding out. Do you? Uh no, and I, it it does seem like the one thing that all the players are aligned with every locker room is like never talk about someone else's money. Leave, yeah, stay out of the. It yeah. happened a little bit in Kansas City though with Chris Jones this year. Yeah, yes. remember that? Well, yeah. Well, I wasn't there for that, but I think everybody in that locker room understands that Chris Jones is the reason for the season on yeah. defense. And yeah. they're like, hey, whatever Sack Nation wants, Sack Nation gets. And he got it and he's come back. He's had a sack in every game. His name's Sack Nation? That's I didn't his, know that. that's like he's the, you know, he's the commander of Oh, I like oh, Sack Nation. I, I thought I that's that. because his ball sack ruptured through his I think compression shorts. It would, shorts it would at be the, the peen team. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you have a problem with that with that Kyle? Mine doesn't hang. Yeah. You, yours didn't never broke through a pair of I hear uh, the word flop shorts. a lot and I'm yeah. like, mm -hmm. where? It was cold <laughs> in that locker room. AC works in Washington, <laughs> yeah. but I gotta say, you know it's frustrating. And we did that. We did the episode. I remember I called you and I was like, "Guys, we got to do an episode. Yeah, I gotta, get, to I gotta get in front of you." This. Literally, you were like, "It was actually." I felt so proud that we had made it to a point where it's like, if a dick 
accidental dick pic comes out, we are the PR team. Was that what it was? Yeah. That, dick that I saw on TV. You know, it's like PR team. All right, we gotta call. We gotta get our cracks at you know our aces on this. We're gonna call PFT and Big Cat. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's off. I mean, think about it though. Yeah. It's like uh, you're one Google away from seeing a you know a, a stack of nickels. Yeah. Right? <laughs> at any time. So I just think about. <laughs> I think about all the people that never wore compression shorts. Yeah, never yeah. sweat through a pair of pants. Yes. Yeah, you know, yeah. never ran around for four hours. Yeah, you had an Granted, athlete. Dick. I'm yeah. no world beater. Yeah, but I yeah. will say, you know. Yeah, that was a bad ankle. Poor representation. Yeah, it was. It, look, all right. That's that's one thing I think a lot of women don't understand is at any given moment of any given day. Your penis I'm can versatile. fluctuate yeah, yeah. wildly. Yes. I am wildly. versatile. Right now, I'm a Tic Tac. Right yeah. now, yeah. sitting and talking to you. Can I you think I'm an indoor animal <laughs> right now. <laughs> Can you imagine just announce our dick sizes yeah. of, of of the given moment? I actually think I'm having a good dick moment right no, now. No, I'm I'm like I'm like I wore I'm the like wrong jeans right for now. a good dick moment. Bugsy yeah, jeans actually help with that. Yeah, okay. they do. They do. They get a, a nice Shout little cradle Muggsy. on. Page it. jeans needs to fix their you know, <laughs> cocksage. Uh, I have a question about podcasting life because obviously you and your brother doing a great job. Green light. PFT and I have both been on multiple times. Awesome podcast. Uh, maybe not exactly about the podcast, but you guys are playing in a softball league. You won. That's fucked up. That's fucked up. Mm-hmm. If I was playing in like adult men's softball and the Long Brothers show up and you're just ripping. We're I, effort guys. We're not athletes. But you were ripping balls down the line. Big lefty hitter. Didn't you get drafted by the MLB? Yeah. White yeah. Sox. We're, you just said we're not athletes. I was a pitcher. You were a professional baseball player. <laughs> the one player. thing they don't let me do in softball is throw hard. And I was a left-handed through 97. So I'm like, you, you, I'm playing one-handed out here. <laughs> have, have there been obscene, moments where guys have been like wait this is not what i signed up for no because you know if if you're from an area like virginia you understand that that baseball is one of those things that everybody plays and if you're not playing lacrosse you have a baseball bat in your hand and there's a lot of skilled dudes and i don't know if you know about this about softball but i mean there's kind of a ceiling to the shit it's you can true do. it's mm-hmm. true so the we, old guy who knows where to place the ball can be when just you're playing as good, a team yeah. with a bunch of roofing shirts and baseball pants you're like we could be in trouble here today, right, guys. Right, right. Um, you know, when six of the wives are behind the, the, the home plate smoking cigs, you're like, these guys are good. Dude, yeah. it's always it's always when the opposing team has, like, a whole posse there, and it's the biggest point of their week. It's I remember, their prime time. Yeah, when we would play, and it would be like, oh, shit, they got a cooler. They got kids there. Kids. It's like, these people, this is their day. Nine o'clock first pitch, there's babies. <laughs> yeah, there. right. Like, You're always your in trouble when that happens. Home. Yes. Yeah, some of the wives have just like a little bit of face paint underneath their eyes, like their moms at the Little League yeah. World Series when you, they show up. You yeah. don't invite your whole family out if you suck at football. My softball. father-in-law came one time, and you know he, you know, I was like, oh, I can't wait to – we went and played golf that day, and I was like, well, I didn't hit it well at golf. I can't wait till you see me hit a softball. You know what I mean? Like, it's way different. It's great. <laughs> I hit it every time. <laughs> I, I think I grounded out twice and had two infield pop flies, and he was like, you guys aren't very good. <laughs> <laughs> I, so, I like, I'm a firm believer in don't bring your fucking family because yes. you lie about yeah, it. Yeah, right, uh-huh. right. Like, I crushed it today. How is your golf game going? I've seen some, Sir, well, some I quit. video. Did you quit? I quit. What made you quit? Uh, I reached out to Frankie Borelli about playing in the Barstool Classic, and he, he, it was just, I got ghosted. So. That's, that's bullshit, oh, Frank. Wow, that's the Frankie. pinnacle of my career would be potentially losing some balls in the Barstool Classic. Would you wow. make a comeback if Frankie, by the grace of God, permitted you to play? Yeah, I might have to go through, like, rigs or something. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we're going to have a simulator here, and you're going to be back a I'm a huge – so I'm a simulator golfer. Mm-hmm. Oh. That's what I am. Okay. Yeah. You're always 10 steps from a refrigerator. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know <laughs> what I mean? That's smart, yeah. Uh, there's yeah. a, there's a lot of things you can have in the sim that'll that'll make your day a lot more enjoyable. Are you still race car driving? I do. I do some of the simulator stuff on iRacing. It's a, yeah. it's a lot of fun. I haven't done it mm-hmm. as much. Uh, dad life has taken some of those hours. Yeah, you really feel like a shithead when you are playing video games as a dad, and you're like, this and I do is, feel like a shithead. Yeah, real yeah. shithead, real shithead. I feel bad in in my airplane simulator when Blake is in the next room just whining at me, like he wants to play, and I'm like, I can't. I'm being a bad dog. How dad is right Blake? Now. He's huge. He's like 60 pounds now. Almost six months old. It's almost your size. That's nice. That's oh, funny. Wow. That's funny. Actually, no, I think that's a compliment because I, I've been feeling kind of fat recently. Really? Yeah, I've been feeling a little you chunky. You don't look fat. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, but the, the shirtless picture of us, me, Big Cat, and Jersey Jerry behind, behind Max on the couch came out. There's just... A lot of unflattering angles. You know how the internet is. Yeah. They're mean. It happens. It's vest it's vest that. season for it is guys vest with season. tits. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Layers, sweatshirt season. It's my favorite day of the year when that when that temperature drops, yep. you're like, 
oh, you won't see. Even if I'm sweating, yeah, I'll you, keep the vest Yeah, on. you won't see the contours of my body for six months. Nope. This rules. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, all right, last question. This has been awesome. Kyle, you're the best. You will be back a few times. So, uh, also, well, I guess this is going to come out after, but when Kyle does come, he's going to stream with us as well. So we're mm -hmm. going to watch Thursday Night Football together. That, uh, we yeah. should ask him that. So what's your official prediction for Thursday Night Football? Oh, the Bills are going to win. Okay. Okay. I mean, well, uh, this is going out after. Bills are going to win at home. The Bills won. Mm -hmm. If it's going out after, they already won. The Bills won. Dominated with, without Ed Oliver. I think Ye Ed Oliver's not playing. Okay. Ooh. As first reported by Kyle Long. Mm. If Ed, if I, I mean, yeah, the Bills are going to win. Okay. okay. Josh right, can't look. Josh and those guys can't look the way they've looked for a, a number of weeks three weeks in a, row. in a row. No. Yeah. Just can't happen. Um. All right. Last question. Rowback question. Rhoback dot com promo code take. Q-zips, polos, hoodies, joggers, shorts, everything, Roback.com, promo code TAKE. So, tell me if I'm stupid. Uh, the Dolphins have a game against the Patriots this week. They have a game against the Chiefs next week. The Dolphins are on fraud watch. We've put them on fraud watch. Is there such a thing as a look-ahead game in the NFL? Uh I know it exists in college. If there ever was one, it's going to be this one yeah. for Miami, who's got to travel across an ocean and play against the best team in the world. Right. So uh, I would say yes. But the issue with Dolphins is just be patient. Take what the defense has given you. Yeah. Don't try to, don't try to do too much because you know New England's going to be laying in wait. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I just I, I love those spots. I mean, college, it really does work every single time. If you're just like, oh, they got a big game next week. Okay, cool. I'm going to fade them this week. Yeah. But it doesn't. It's it's too much buttoned up professional professionalism in the NFL to not have look ahead games. Yeah, I mean you, you're reminded too much of what the task is at hand. I right. Would say. Right. So that college coaches need to do that more. Yeah. I also just love fading a, a college team after they have a big win because you just know they're going to party nonstop. Yeah. Did like you Colorado? Fade yeah. Them all yeah. Year. Yeah. Did you ever uh, go overseas? Yeah, I did. I got fired on my way back from London. What do you mean? I played like shit, and I had to sit across from Nags and his wife, and they were essentially like... Is it the Raiders game? Yeah. Hey, yeah. I'm going to pee my pants. Can I go pee really Yeah, quick? yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, we're ending the interview. I have Kyle Long, so the best. Yeah, you started so moving, bad. and I was like, yeah. the only problem is we don't know where the bathrooms are because this office is so Oh, yeah. Big. You have to go like around. All right, Shane, get him to a bathroom. Kyle Long, everyone. Thank you so Hell much, yeah. Kyle. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> you Kyle. started moving. I was like, <laughs> I think he's going to pee himself. Today's Fire Fest segment is sponsored by our friends at Morgan & Morgan. Did you know... People aged 25 to 34 have the highest amount of drivers involved in car crashes. If you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Covering a spread in the NFL is hard, but guess what? Using Morgan & Morgan isn't. Morgan & Morgan is America's largest injury law firm. They have over 100 offices nationwide and more than 800 lawyers with over $15 billion recovered for over 300,000 clients. Morgan & Morgan has a proven track record of fighting to get you Full and fair compensation. Morgan & Morgan has been fighting for the people for over 35 years. Submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan is so easy. Entering, entertaining clients can be hard. Submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan is easy. Big Cat, do you think it's so easy that if one were to run into an unseen hazard in a parking lot and sustain damage, they could then yes. file action against the person that made the, lo the let me, let parking me, lot let me, so dangerous? Let me, let me do it for you perfectly. Driving is so hard for some, but filing a claim in Morgan & Morgan is easy. I don't know who you're talking about with that one. <laughs> if you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. For more information, go to forthepeople.com slash PMT or dial pound law, pound 529 from your cell phone. That's F-O-R, thepeople.com slash PMT or pound law. Pound 529 from your cell phone. This is a paid advertisement. Morgan & Morgan, check them out. They're great people. They will protect you. Okay, Firefest of the Week. Henry, you've been hungover since Monday. I've been hungover since Monday, although I did. I went to a Blackhawks game. I've been kind of weaning myself off, and by weaning myself off, it's just like having a few beers every yep. night, so I'm not just dead that's the right strategy yeah, you, yeah. So, i know we got the we're at the weekend we're at the weekend it's friday weekend. we're at the weekend so, made it. so that's why i was giving myself till yeah yeah so, yeah next week so let's talk about it real quick hank because i feel like this is you've had this before you turned 30 this summer um it's a bitch yeah it's a bitch when you drink for a full weekend and then you don't feel normal until like thursday afternoon yeah i mean these were these were you know to my Two best friends getting married, so they're late nights with the boys, travel mix in the middle of it, and then obviously with the new office and stuff, I've, there's been a lot of lot going on. So, mm -hmm. 
it's bad. I mean, it, it all Monday, all Tuesday, like I was just. I was just in a fog, and you do, I still kind of am. You do have the only cure for it. Max cured me. I mean, there was a lot a lot of good stuff happening, though, like Max and the Phillies losing. Oh, While that was I was great. disappointed, it kind of, like, content-wise, I was like, yes, this content's so good. I'm happy for us. The Max Iwana. Uh, that, that, oh, we got that so high off the Max Iwana. We hotboxed this room. This office is amazing. Being here finally is amazing. Obviously, there's a lot to, a lot to come, but that's all exciting stuff. Oh, we're going to come. We're going to come hard. It's come already a little bit. Mm, we come. It. It's like pre- it back. is really a dream. It's it's unreal. It's it's just we're so close, and we're, I'm not gonna say we're so so close, but so far. But it's like once everything is fully done and finished, it's, we're gonna be golf simulator going in on Monday. Buzzing, yeah. We're, Hank's gonna be working so hard in the golf simulator. So hard. I'm so excited. So excited going to Madison this weekend. Super excited about that. What yep. else are you doing? What are you doing tomorrow, Hank? Uh, probably gonna come here for a little bit, mm -hmm. and then what? <laughs> Maybe golf. Oh, yeah, yeah. wait, but it, what month are we in? It's October. I, it's September. September was a no golf month. No, I know, but we were doing, once the office opens, we're like working, 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 working. So that way we can golf on Fridays in the summer, except for the one Friday you owe us for week seven. Office isn't open. Where, where are we sitting right now? We can't, half of the office isn't open. We can't produce content from the office besides this podcast. Except for this. If you guys yeah. want to come record tomorrow, I'm down. Okay, great. What time? 9 a.m. Uh, I was thinking more like 2. <laughs> 2 o'clock. <laughs> Hank will be busy at that Good point. luck at your golf game. Thank you. Yeah, good your little luck, golf Hank. game. Couldn't I'll, be me. <laughs> yeah, are be you golfing piece. with him? I did it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hank and I are playing quick 18. Uh, yeah, exactly. We'll get some content out of it. And then, yeah, my it's next. Wow. Like, the next, my next fire fest, the, just the sentence itself is what I realize is the true fire fest as a 30-year-old. Uh, I don't have a Halloween costume. Yeah. Wait, we're. <laughs> Where 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 are you going to hall? I got invited to a oh, Halloween party. Oh, Donnie's. I got invited to a Halloween party. Shit, mm. I got invited. Not really. Like someone else told me about it. But I kind of want to go. But you also can't go to a Halloween party without a Halloween costume. But also, like I don't want. I got get an idea for costume. you. Harry Potter. No. Oh. Similar. Max, you still got those overalls? Yeah, this is bullshit. I, knew. I, 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 I could read it in your fucking face. You, you were like, I have an idea. You know, you, I could just see in the side of your eye. That's this a twinkle. A great idea. idea. That's a this, great, this idea. great idea. Great idea. That is a Max, great Max, we're going to need those idea. overalls, buddy. Uh, you're crazy if you don't think I threw those out the second. I All right, so then oh. can we get Max, Amazon we're going to need Prime. we're going to need your fucking big uh, jumbo pants. No, you're not getting shit. <laughs> I'm just going to look up. You uh, just showed up and I, I look ridiculous. Phillies overalls. Nothing Let's is working. Can get I can get here. the wig, throw some pigtails in there. <laughs> you should do it, Hank. And just scream and cry and say you're not crying, but cry. Yeah, that's a great idea. Great that's idea. That's Firefest cured. All right. Great. <laughs> great. <laughs> this is bullshit. I, I knew. I knew. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, PFT or Firefest. Look at what I do for you. Yeah. Like, I look at me right now. Look at what I'm doing for you. I look ridiculous. He's right. He's right. He's right, Daddy. He's right. I don't think you're doing it for us, though. Yes, I mean, it's not fucking working. I look None ridiculous. of it is working. Uh, my fire fest. Well, we know one of them, which is. Uh, a telephone pole hit by car. Mm -hmm. The other fire fest is similar in that I'm having I'm having a bad week in parking lots in general. So there was that incident that happened on Tuesday. On Monday, there's a McDonald's next to my house. Mm -hmm. I like to stop in sometimes, get a little McCafe going in the morning, maybe get a McMuffin, mm. get a steak, egg, and cheese biscuit. Sometimes mm. I uh, a griddle. Me, oh, I love the sausage McGriddle. Yeah, really good. I'm like Jerry Jones. I pour extra salt on it. But I, I pulled into the parking lot, parked my car in what I thought was a McDonald's parking spot because it's in a McDonald's parking lot. Turns out the McDonald's parking lot is shared with, uh, I, I think, another local business. And I was not allowed to park my car there. I went into the store, got my meal, came out. And there was a giant boot on my car. They booted my car in the like five minutes what? I was inside. Yes. Shit. So I see. Was I, this after the accident? No, it was before. It was oh before the accident. Oh, my God. Um, so I see the boot on the car, right? And 
uh, there's a security guy, or he's like he's dressed in a uniform that looks like a, a police uniform, and he just hands me a slip of paper, and it says like, "Do not move your car. Call this number." And the guy just turns around, gets into his car, and drives away. And I was like, Fuck. I was like, "Hey, how do I get this boot off my car? Like, I got places to be. I'm a mover and a shaker. Right? How do I get out of this parking lot right now?" And he just looks at me, doesn't respond, chooses to not respond, gets in his car and drives away. Oh. I get into an Uber to go to the office and uh, I call the number and the person on the other end says, yeah, there was supposed to be a second guy in that parking lot that you can pay to get your boot off right what away. What a scam. And I'm like, wait, what? Because the first guy just got into his car and either he is unable to speak or he just chose not to speak to me and left. And they're like, no, you can pay it on site. So I go back and the second person came up and I was like, what's going on here? Why, why can't I move my car? How'd you boot? He's like, yeah, you're not supposed to park here. There's a sign over there in the corner that says you're not supposed to park here in the space or in the corner there. The sign is in the corner. It's not on the space. That's crazy. It's like I, the sign says like from this point to that point, Oh, that's you can't bullshit. park here. And it's like almost an intentionally small sign. So I asked the guy, I'm like, so how can I get this? And he's like, well, I can take your payment right now. And I thought the, the whole time that this was like Chicago parking police. It's not. It's like a private company that does like instead of doing a tow truck, it's a tow truck business that didn't want to have to pay money for a tow truck. Right. So they just got like one boot that they just put on people's cars. And they're like, hey, you owe me 150 bucks to take this boot off. So I pay the guy 150 bucks, get the boot off, and I'm able to drive away. I'm still like 50 percent thinking it's just a scam and these people weren't even supposed to be there and they just show up to parking lots and do this. But they got my money. I need to make sure that they don't steal any more of my money. Damn. I, I did pay. They also wanted to see my, my driver's license. And I Damn. don't know why not the police needed to see my driver's license. Sounds like a scam. Sounds like I might have gotten hosed on this one. Sounds um, like you so might have gotten I just, scam. So you I gave them your card information and all of your name and address. And I stuff. swiped my card. I, it's the New York address. I still haven't changed. It'll be that's good. It'll be good eight years before I change my ID again. <laughs> I, I just got a New York ID. Um, so I probably got scammed. Either that, or it's just a crock of shit and uh, wasted an entire morning trying Damn. to deal with the shit. But yeah, I'm just having a I'm having a bad week in parking lots. I need to stay out of parking lots. Yeah, you for do. The rest probably of my entire life. That's that sucks. Yeah, quite a fire fest. Shit. Okay. How are they allowed to do that? They're just allowed it's to like scam. walk up to your car and be yeah. like, sorry, you can't drive anywhere now. I'm sure if you were like a lawyer and could hit him with some information. Hit up and, Morgan and, and Morgan. Yeah, like you could probably get them to take it off for free, but you'd have to do a lot of a lot of haggling. A lot of lawyering. Yeah. Am I insane to think that I could pass the bar exam? No. Yes. Without studying? Yes. That's I probably so. irrational confidence thing. Because I'm good at taking tests. Yeah, I'm no. not. What type of questions do they? It's yes. like very hard. Logic. It's not very happening. Hard. Logic. Yeah, it's very hard. I did do. I did two sample questions, and I got them both right. Is it just like multiple choice, like crime or no? Yes. Crime or no? Murder. Hey, yeah. Is it a crime? Find a thousand dollars on the on the ground. <laughs> Good give it back. Yeah. Good answer. Yeah. Uh, no, I think I could. I think if I did a bar exam, I could pass. All of it except for the uh, essay part. You're triggering yeah, but it's so 50, many 50 lawyers. PFT, right I'm pretty sure. Yeah. What? I'm pretty sure the test is 50-50. Is it, no, it's not. It's like like four multiple choice answers. No, I'm saying the like how it's weighted, the scoring. Like half of it right. is multiple choice and half is essay. So essay is yeah, you'd, you'd very be bad important. at the essay. Yeah, I don't want to do the essay part because that requires like a lot of detailed explanation yeah. of my thoughts. But I I'm good Just at cite a bunch of cases. I, I'm good at reading a test question and figuring out what they're trying to ask me right. and then answering it. Like I'm good at not studying people for things. People who study for the test. bar, like they lock themselves in a library for like Yeah, but they hours. might be overthinking it. I think PFT is right. Yeah. They well, are, people they who go to law school don't. Yeah. It's like a, a lot of people. Yeah. Don't. They waste their money. I could pass it right now. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know. But I like the confidence. I, I mean, I, there's also no way to prove that you're wrong. Do you become a lawyer if you pass the bar exam? People yeah, don't go to medical can, school yeah. and they save lives all the time. Yeah. That's true. CPR. CPR. Yeah. You know CPR? I know of it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. um, okay. My fire fest. Well, Big Cat, could you coach an NFL game right now? Uh, not well. Yeah. I could be a terrible lawyer right now. <laughs> Wait, no, but no, but you're you're saying passing a test. Like if you if I had to pass a test of coaching an NFL game, I would fail. I've watched enough SVU, I think, to pass the bar exam. That's what I'm getting at here. Okay. Um, what are you guys shaking your heads at? Max thought he was joking about the bar. I said, no, PFT's been talking about this for weeks. He really thinks he can pass it. He I, could. The I, multiple choice part. So then take it. Okay. 
If you're talking about it for multiple weeks, then take it. I'll do it. I'm going to get signed <laughs> no, up. No, you won't. It's also I, like two full do days. Yeah. No, it just going to be more getting commentary soon enough. No, you have yeah. to do the whole thing. You can't no, say only the multiple choice well, part. Did, that's what I just said, though. Like, but, I, I could not pass the written part. But that's part of the bar. Correct. But I could pass the so, I could pass the multiple choice part. I could get 200 points on the SATs. Yeah. I mean, but, like, that's not take pat, like doing well on the SATs. My entire argument is that I think... I think I'm delusional. I, I understand that I'm probably wrong, but I do. I have a rational confidence that I could pass the multiple choice part. You're a good writer. Don't sell yourself short. I don't, but I. it's like open-ended questions. I would just turn it back on them. I'd be like, this question is, is illegitimate. You have no authority to ask me these questions because I do not recognize you as the bar exam administrator. Yeah, I don't have the slightest clue what type of questions could be asked on the bar. I have no fucking like, idea. So... I'm looking no it up now. Uh, I think written is only thirty percent. Oh, mm. okay. so I can get a. That's a passing grade. But you'd have to go perfect. It's a hundred. It's two hundred multiple choice questions. Okay, ready. A man is sitting on a beach chair peacefully and in a relaxed meditative state when a truck racing on the sand ran down a sunbathing elderly person. The man said out loud, "Oh God, look what the truck driver did." The man driving that truck was racing and going about hundred miles per hour. Someone call nine one one. A woman who was sitting on the beach nearby, but facing the other way, heard the man's outcry. See. When the case comes to a trial, <laughs> will the court allow both the man and the woman to testify about the man's utterances? Hmm. Yes, both the man and women, uh, woman and man can testify because it is an excited utterance exception to the hearsay rule that goes to the material issue of the case. Yes, because this is not hearsay and it is not being entered for the truth of the statement by either witness so they can both testify. No, neither of them can testify because the man was impaired due to being re too relaxed for his meditation. <laughs> that and the woman like cannot the repeat yeah. the utterance of an impaired witness. No, neither can testify because the utterance do not fit any of the exceptions to the hearsay rule. Hmm. I think the answer is... Neither of them can testify. Uh, which one? No, neither of them can testify because the utterance did not fit any of the exceptions to the hearsay rule? Or no, neither of them can testify because the man was impaired due to being too relaxed? I want to say that one, but I don't think that's the right answer. Okay, so, so I'm going to say D. I'm going to say, yeah. Neither of them can Wrong. testify. Wrong. Oh, okay. C? A. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have to see the last Tuesday and Wednesday. Yeah, but that's one of 70. Yeah, you know, exactly. Could... I could go 69 for 70. The last Tuesday and Wednesday in February and July. Okay. All right. Illinois bar exam. All right. A small town police officer pulled over a driver for speeding. Uh -huh. He believed that the driver was acting irritable and fidgety, but he had no articulable reason to think anything was wrong. He searched the car anyway and found two cartons of freshly canned peaches, which were owned by the driver's neighbor and reported stolen off her porch 24 hours earlier. Authorities charged him with theft under the state criminal code. His motion to suppress the evidence because of an unlawful search was denied. On appeal with the appellate court, likely reversed the lower court decision denying the motion to suppress. Yes, because the search warrant was unconstitutional due to the officer having no probable cause that would justify searching the car. Yes, because when a car is pulled over for speeding, the officer must always obtain a search warrant prior to making any search. No, the stop and search were within the normal bounds of proprietary uh, for a speeding stop. No, because driver being fidgety is enough for a probable cause full search of the vehicle. How relaxed that, was this This guy? one's pretty easy. This is A or B. It's A or B. It's it's no, it's not because B. the I, driver did not. Can you read me A and B again? Yes, because the search was unconstitutional due to the officer having no probable cause that would justify searching the car. Yes, because when a car is pulled over for speeding, the officer must always obtain a search warrant prior to making any search. It's A because if it, he can also search the car if the driver gives him consent to search the car. So I don't know if the a, guy gave him consent. A. I, I'm going to say A, but I, I don't recall any point in that question. You're where right. Anything about consent. Yeah, there we go. There we go. I'm one for one in my last one. You're one for two. One for one in my last one. All right, last one. Okay. A pet breeder is in the business of breeding calves at his cattle ranch where he has a stable of prolific cows who are very fertile. Oh. Ooh. The okay. newborn calves need constant attention and care. One day, one of the employees inadvertently leaves the fence door open and a newly born calf breaks free and goes to his neighbor's land. The breeder went to the neighbor's land to retrieve the calf for its safety and to make sure it was unharmed. However, 
He was arrested on a trespass charge after entering the land. The breeder appealed. Will the court dismiss this charge? Yes, because he had a limited privilege to enter the land to prevent harm to his cattle. Yes, because the tender pet doctrine allows temporary entry to retrieve baby animals. That's a pretty specific doctrine. No, because the neighbor had a right to keep any living chattels uh, that crossed onto his... It says chattels. Uh, I don't know what that is. Yeah. It's like uh, it's a livestock. Term. Okay, they crossed onto his land. No, because his status as a breeder made him unqualified for a limited license. Okay, so I think this Could one is B. also A or B. I think he. I think you're within your rights to retrieve your wandering livestock. This might be a hezy hay with I, the. It might be B because B was, I think, a very specific one. Pet doctrine, yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna go with B. A. Okay, well. That was a hezy. One for three. One for three. Well, it was. I narrowed that one down to <laughs> right. I was one for three is not passing. I was technically. What do you right have to get to pass? <laughs> Better than one for three. Listen, I'm not. Yeah. Gonna, I'm, not <laughs> I'm not here to be a farm lawyer. I'm here to be a, a a cool lawyer. I think we should actually. What we should do is you should take it. We can see if we take it, and and we'll just. I'll read all the answers on live stream and let people guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it sounds good. Let's just do a subathon. Yeah. PFT takes the bar. <laughs> you can do it during the 24 hours. Yeah. Well, let's see, the thing is, I want to be able to read. The, that's part of yeah, being no, you're able right. to like, deduce the test and what they're you're asking. You're right. You're right. You, you have, have to get. But a, we can set it up that people can see the question while you're reading it. 266 it, out of 400. I'll take it during the 24 hour stream. Wait, I only have to get 266 out of 400, right? That's so many questions. Oh, I could do this. Oh, my oh, especially God. if I studied for it. Yeah, That's but the so written many questions. is a big port, like thirty. If I if I studied, well, I took the SATs. I literally blacked out halfway through and just did CCCs. Like I, <laughs> yeah. I couldn't, I could not sit still for so that. Wait, long. You, your your uh, Even firm declaration is you could pass the bar multiple choice por- portion only. Yeah, yeah, if I studied, I could definitely do it. Okay. And then I'd be all your lawyers. Well, no, because I'd you wouldn't pass the bar. I'd sue everyone. The multiple choice. You could be a lawyer, but you have to. Every piece of advice you give has to be in multiple choice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd ask the ju- objection, Your Honor. <laughs> Can you? Rephr- Why am I objecting? A. Yeah, the witness rephrased because I didn't pass the full bar. <laughs> witness rephrased to A, B, C, D, or E, all of the above. Yeah, this is uh, the best Morgan and Morgan segment we've ever done. It is. Oh. It is. All right, my fire fest. Uh, I haven't been sleeping. I had so we've been doing a shitload of stuff. Haven't been sleeping. Tuesday night, we got home after we all smoked that Maxawana and it was fucking good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I went to bed and I, so every time I get home, Stella's sleeping in my spot and I put her in her dog bed next to me on the floor. And uh, all of a sudden, th- three to- four times in the middle of the night. So I went to sleep at one, I get up at 6.30. Four times in that time frame, the TV just turned on. And I couldn't figure it out. And I have a remote on my phone, so I kept on turning it off. So I literally, like, I'd fall asleep, get in ghost. deep sleep. TV would turn on. Ghost. What the fuck? You have a ghost. Well, no, I woke up the next morning, and I was, like, Stella, you ready to go out? And she got up, and the remote was literally under her ass. <laughs> <laughs> so every time she moved, so I just didn't sleep that night. Uh, not her fault, my fault, but that sucked. That's the worst when you're behind on sleep, and then you, you're expecting a particular night to be an awesome night of sleep. Right. Full eight, and then it just doesn't happen. Oh, I have full eight. I, I don't know what a full eight means. I haven't gotten full eight in a long time. You haven't uh, been filleted? No, I have not been filleted in a long time. <laughs> uh, the uh, My other fire fest is we're going to Madison this weekend. Oh, go. Uh, anyone who wants to come to the live show, it's going to be an awesome, awesome time. Uh, it is 4.30 p.m. Kickoff is at 6.30, so you got more than enough time. 10 North Charter Street. It is a 10-minute walk to Camp Randall, so come out. It's going to be awesome. But, boys, I believe that the Badgers are going to upset and shock the world. And I know that this is how it happens to me, where there's no reason for me to believe this other than the fact that, ready for this, Jake? 20 years ago this month, a freshman big cat stormed the field when Wisconsin, as I think a double-digit underdog, beat number three Ohio State. Whoa, and 20 Mm. years later. 20 years later. An un, a double digit underdog is playing number three Ohio State. Wow. Yeah, so I'm going to get crushed. Um, and what I'm happened the last time you went to Madison for an athletic event? We want to share the Big Ten championship. And what did, you, the and what did you do afterwards? I, were, I, you I stormed. stormed the field. One and all your last one storms. Yeah, so this is the problem, though, because I don't think they're actually going to win, but I'm going to work myself into a frenzy and be like, yeah, it's going to happen. Mm hmm. Uh, Hank, what do if you, it does? It's going to be incredible. Yeah. Hank, do you want to get... It's Halloween, night game, Camp mm-hmm. Randall. Vibes are great. 
Luke Fickle was on the other sideline that night telling Robert Reynolds to choke Jim Sorgi out. I don't know if Luke Fickle actually did that. It's destiny. It's destiny. Hey, do you want to get a quick pump in when we get to Madison? Sure. Strength and conditioning coach asked us. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I did out. say I was off till Tuesday, but I'll, I'll, I, I can break Just early. Quick pump. Yeah. Quick pump. Just get juiced up. It's squat-tober. Yeah, just oh, yeah. do some squats. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jake, your fire fest. Yeah, this is pretty well documented, but we haven't talked about it on the show yet. Uh, when you guys took your shirts off the other day, mm -hmm. I was very uncomfortable. It brought me back to my days of shirts versus skins where I prayed I was on shirts. And it was... Jake, was you had... in the corner. You had the best visual out of all of us. Though. You, no, it was bad, too. You were... If for people who don't poster. know the picture, um, it's on this our Twitter feeds. Stream, yeah, on matches. our streams. I don't know if we can put it in the YouTube, whatever. We It's late, so I'm not going to make everyone do more editing. But Jake, I've never seen a person sitting while also running away. Yeah. I was, and that's what he was, was doing. Like, he was running away while sitting. <laughs> and the amount of tweets I got, like, take your shirt off. You're the reason the Phillies lost. You are. <laughs> you are. I, I apologize to Max because the last two players to get out were named Jake and Marsh. So. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Oh, my God. So between that and the shirt, it really was my fault. <laughs> oh, my. I said he could blame me. You made the right God. choice, though, because with those couches, there's no good angle you can possibly Also, have. like, I didn't get sucked up into the peer pressure. You didn't cave. Yeah. You're your own man. Exactly. Getting sucked up in the peer pressure rules. Especially when it's tarps off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like when everyone's like, oh, if you if your friend tells you to jump off a bridge, we'd do it. Yeah. If everyone is. What football game was that last year where just a couple guys took their shirts off and by the end of the game, the entire section was filled? It was like in the yeah. upper deck yeah. with dudes with their shirts off. Oh, yeah. Indiana. Yeah. Indiana. Indiana. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, peer pressure gets a bad rap. Like, peer pressure kind of rocks because it means, yeah. like, all your friends, peers. You're probably are, having fun. Yeah, they're like, hey, do this fun thing with us, drugs, whatever. And you're like, oh, no, I don't want to get sucked in. Uh, yeah, yeah, I do, and I'm going to have no. fun with you guys. Normally, I wouldn't, but since you asked. Yeah, I mean, right. Peer pressure is us thing. rules. I just kind of got caught up. It's yeah. Situation. It, is, it, it is cool getting caught up in something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Getting peer pressure into something. Yeah, but. Oh, no, you won't do it. It's also nice, like, standing, <laughs> standing your ground. No. <laughs> <laughs> that is a law in Florida. Yes, it is, Jake. You're back. Castle Doctor. Lawyer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good show, boys. Uh, we'll see everyone Sunday night. We'll be watching uh, the Bears beat the Chargers. Yeah, I think so. yeah, it could happen. Live while we record. Uh, Hank, have you ever gotten this? No, Dan, have you? Why are you going to do that? Just say no. Just say no and be all mad. That's nice lawyer 101. Answer, Objection. Answer, redirect. Answer, answer a question with a question. Uh, numbers. 18. 17. 27. Some guy gave it to me outside the Laugh Factory last 20. night. Eight. <sighs> Memes? Just getting three. No. Uh, what was right, your fine, number? I'll take 20, but I wanted, 20. To, I wanted, I wanted to take memes. Oh, Shane. No, now I'm stuck. He's taking Oh, is Shane, is Shane, Shane picking? You fucked up. Yeah, Shane fucked up. Shane and Evan are in the Would part Shane of my take? balls uh, category. Okay. What Shane take? Ten. Hmm. Yeah. Memes. I'm, I'm stuck. Uh, sixty-nine. Okay. So your numbers again, real quick. Eight. Seventeen. Twenty-seven. Sixty-nine. Three's gonna hit. Eighteen. Max is twenty. Shane is ten. Twenty. I can see twenty. Just went underneath. Those balls are really flying. Well, you have to press it. So it's like the tension rises. This is going to be 20. Here we go. 41. Uh, Let's do one more. Close. Let's do one more. Let's just do one more. Counts? Okay, but we, yeah, have, to, counts. But, but we have to stop doing two after tonight. Okay. No. We'll do three. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go eight again. I'll go 17. 27 again. Counts. For, officially 18. counts. We're working the new is ball anyone machine. Changing? Is anyone 20. changing? 20. Nah, 69. All right. Evan. Oh, yeah. We didn't have Evan. Evan. Uh, 28. 28. 28. All right. 10. 8. 27. 17. 18. 20. 28. And then what was memes? 69. 70. Oh, one off me. 70. So close. Okay, we'll see everyone Monday. Love you guys.